is a 10. I choose this family. Hi guys, welcome to episode 23 of 911 Lone Star Roundup. I'm one of your hosts, Grace, and with me are my lovely co-hosts, Katie. Hi guys. And EJ. Hey everybody. Today we will be talking about the original 911 season 3. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like, oh so much. <laughs> so the season's like a couple of months after the end of season 2, and it starts with this high-speed chase that Athena somehow calls the fire department in on, and Bobby in the truck kind of makes a comment that their harebrained idea was his wife's and so it was kind of the first time his uh the crew had realized that they were married so it comes in that nobody really knew 100 percent that they'd gotten married at the end of last season and, which uh, like <clears throat> by this point it's been a few months because you know buck's training to go right. back and stuff yep. so it's like guys yep. so they just like to go failed to therapy to mention or something that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, failed to mention that for what like how many months <laughs> probably um, like six honestly yeah it was pro- I, yeah i would say it was definitely four to six months because buck had a lot of injury that he had to yeah. deal with and surgeries and stuff so i mean just physical therapy period takes yeah. months and so he does eventually re- requalify and so the, they host a party at athena and bobby's as a surprise party for buck mm-hmm. which is awesome to get to see you know everybody there supporting him and you know the of course whole- I I was waiting for that. <laughs> I, I, I had to. And I'm the, like, and the and the Chris giving him a card. Oh, yes. I was like, yep, yeah, that's about all I saw at that party. That's all I care about at that party. Like, um, <laughs> just a little family interaction there. Like, that's all I care about. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, while Buck is talking to Bobby about coming back, he starts coughing up blood. And at the moment, he has a pulmonary embolism, which is when a blood clot goes from your leg up into your heart and then into your lungs. So he has to go on blood thinners. And because of that, he's not able to go back to work yes. right away. So he's not happy about that and decides to quit during the episode, which I can understand it. You know, he's bummed. You know, he, yeah, that, he's planning that I on can going understand. Down. I'm somebody who doesn't want to work behind a desk either. So so, like he quits because he doesn't want to have to work behind a desk a little over dramatic but okay yeah it is buck we're talking about though he's probably the most <laughs> dramatic person we've ever encountered that is true yeah yes. buck has, buck has a history of some stuff so uh, it, it wasn't crazy like super surprising but yeah. you know I, and i felt bad for him but i can understand yeah like you you like the adrenaline you like the job that you're doing and then to not be able to go back to that much of a struggle so yeah, yeah. so then kind of the tail end of the first episode we get is Eddie figures he'll take it under kind of his own idea of like, let's get Buck to stop moping. So he takes Christopher over to Buck's to uh, get him to hang out with uh, Chris. I and love that. I love. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, He's like, yeah, so I, don't, I don't care that you're like just moping because you need to stop moping and here you're babysitting my kid because I need to go to work. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, because I think Carla was out of town or something, so... He probably so, figured figured that Baby and Buck wouldn't get them anywhere, right. so he just was kind of like, "All right, let's go." I'm like, "Okay, I, I I can respect that." But I love Eddie's thought of well, and what he says to Buck about you know Chris never feels sorry for himself, yeah, and how like here's a nine year old you can learn get learn from, you know. You think you're having trouble with your leg? Can we talk about the fact that ZP has or Christopher has ZP? Yeah. yeah. Like, um. Yeah, you kind of got your beat there. And then we see Chris and Buck go hang out, and they end up at the Santa Monica Pier, right on the water. Having deep, heartfelt conversations. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think there's a moment where Buck sees, like, somebody collab- had collapsed, and the paramedics were responding from a different firehouse, and so he was like, kinda, he's like, I think the world is Revolving out to get me or that. something. <laughs> Mocking yeah. me. Mocking me, yeah. And uh, he talks to Chris. Chris is on the bench, looking out over the water, and Buck is sitting there holding him by the shirt, and... Uh, they're like having this like deep conversation and Chris turns to him and he's like you're gonna be okay kid Buck it was really cute I <laughs> loved that I love that moment but oh. the end of the show ends with them pulling out on them on them and seeing the water pulling out of the Santa Monica area and the tsunami starting mm-hmm. yeah the tsunami which I think is my favorite natural disaster of the 911 agreed shows. agreed and yes. it was amazingly done it was it was awesome yeah. that was like everything about it was stellar and heart-wrenching and 
Yeah. Uh, which is where we go into episode two, where, you know, tsunami's just about to hit. And, okay, this, I always have this, and I don't know why my attention's always on this little factor, but you know how Chris has a huge stuffed bear? Yeah. yeah. I always go, but what about the bear? <laughs> what about the bear? I know. I, I think am about someone who cares very backpack. deeply for my stuffed toys. I would get them, I would rescue them in a fire. <laughs> so that is me going, but what about the bear? <laughs> yeah, look. I'm like, I think something is wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, I always think about the, the bear and I think about Chris's backpack and his crutches because Buck just literally picks him up and runs. Which, that's what you're supposed to do in a disaster. Right, Don't save right. stuff. You get the hell out of there. Right, right. Because you can't be replaced, but your stuff can be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah so, I, and I love like, you know, Buck does the first thing he can, which is kind of get to protection, but then that, you know, they get washed in further inland. I think he was hoping that like the little barricade of the um whatchamacallit the stall mm-hmm. would kind of um negate a little bit of the pressure that'd be hitting them yeah but he didn't quite get down far enough to be able to make that a reality right yeah well and, uh, that, and that stall was very like it wasn't really attached down that tightly no the moment it was hit it was pretty much gone <clears throat> right. but you know you do what you can they knew they weren't getting out of there and really even if somebody had started running the moment they'd seen the water retreating they probably still wouldn't have been out of the area because those oh, things move fast yeah i i live in a an area i mean obviously i live in washington so like the entire western u.s is basically on a tsunami alert anytime there's an earthquake and once you see the water receding it, you, you're out of time like it you're there's no time so yeah you know. like people do survive tsunamis but it's mm-hmm. hard i was actually watching yeah. a how to survive a tsunami video <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a few days ago I was like, okay, yeah. good to know, especially if I want to move to California. Like, that's really good right. to know. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and around here, we have uh, tsunami drills sometimes. They'll do things. Oh, yeah. And when you go closer out to the ocean, there's signs that say, like, tsunami evacuation zone, which is, like, um, an arrow pointing to, like, higher higher, higher ground. Oh, well, that's good, especially for tourists and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because so. anyway. if they haven't gone through the tsunami drills, then yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, obviously, the, the whole episode is all about the tsunami, and, and everyone kind of in this show is getting affected by it uh you know 911's obviously overloaded you know the 118 goes into help um which is hen shin bobby and eddie mm-hmm. um, and then obviously eddie is like glad that quote unquote buck and chris are not in it because they said <laughs> they were going know. to the movies yeah, and so he, he thought know. they were gone already yeah um and I, that entire time i'm just sitting there i'm going oh no <laughs> um, <laughs> but and, at the same time i'm glad yeah. because eddie didn't need to be worrying about that and the exactly. chances of them actually being able to find buck and christopher were next to nine like that that's a lot of area to cover and uh may and athena had been in a car accident and they were kind of stuck in it intersection where there's this big pile up and that's you know there was a lot of drama there and then buck and christopher buck had managed to get christopher onto the top of a fire truck that had been parked near the pier because that's the fire department that had been responding to the uh, collapsed person on the pier 136 i believe was the, yeah, it was the 136 yeah and then at 911 we get maddie who even though she's a dispatcher sue knows that she has a history of being a er nurse so she pulls her off answering calls to help kind of assess how the operators are handling everything and giving them breaks when they need it and also helping kind of send people to like wherever they can get help Mm -hmm. and uh, so she's kind of the one that helps with the figuring out to send everybody to the new the recently decommissioned va hospital near the tsunami um, which i'm like zone brilliant oh yeah like fluke but brilliant (laughs) and uh i think there was a time on the truck where buck and chris are talking and Buck kind of, I think he apologizes to Chris or something, and, and then Chris thanks him for saving him, and that's because that's what Buck, or Chris sees out of it the whole thing. Which I'm I like, that was so baby. cute. I think it was Buck might have been saying something like, your dad's gonna be, you know, he's like, your dad's never gonna let me hang out with you again, or something. Cause I think he was like, out. I take you out once, and <laughs> look what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and he's like, Chris says, you, you saved, saved me. me. And them? Because by this point, Buck had been a hero, and saved all these people that were in the water um that he could yeah and i'm like yeah good for him because you know he had the capability and he and he did it and i'm like good boy and the first episode ends with 
as anybody knows, kind of how tsunami works. The tsunami comes in and eventually that wave is going to have to go back out to sea. And so as the next wave is heading back out to sea, it's pulling a whole bunch of debris and stuff. And in the chaos of the water coming out and all the debris coming down the roads, Chris falls off the fire truck and Buck realizes it too late and can't find him. And that's how episode two ends. And it was so hard. (laughs) I was like, the first time I watched this, I was basically like, screaming <laughs> yeah i'm like what the hell yeah like watching these like for me watching them like while they're airing is so hard because i like how they're dragged down to multiple episodes but i also hate it because then you have to wait another week to see like i remember getting to the end of each of these episodes like special mostly episode two be like they're not even gonna finish off the story i have to wait another week to find out what happens right. what the hell right right <sighs> yeah it's <laughs> it's rough <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and season three pretty much mirrored season two with kind of the, we had a first kind of an intro episode, and then we had two and three episodes were the big disaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, come to think of it, like, four kind of mirrored that too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've all, like, besides, like, season one, obviously, they've all pretty much gone off the same thing with that. And I like Because the- they developed their natural yeah. disaster thing at season two. Yeah, yeah and I, I like that. Like, it's yeah. like, you know you're gonna get something until eventually. Where yeah. they just don't have anything else to give us. Yeah. yeah In which case, like you're it. like, hmm, will they just invent something? Like, will a an asteroid hit Earth or something? <laughs> honestly, like- yeah. Honestly, I feel like they'll just come up with like a huge emergency type storyline, and just when they run out of natural de- disasters, because there's only so much you can tell, and then they'll just especially use since that. they're doing it with Lone Star too. Yes. yes. And I love that they're doing it with Lone Star as well. Yeah. Yes. So that means that they're like double running out of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, so, <laughs> anyway. episode three is, you know, the, the wave is returned to the sea. Uh, a lot of water and debris still left behind. Uh, Buck is running around Santa Monica hunting for Chris. Eddie had climbed up right at the end of the episode. Also, um, the 118 made their way out to the Ferris wheel that was sticking out of the water. Um, and Eddie climbed up or was about to climb up to help um, a female firefighter, La Bombera, which is... Uh, Spanish for Lady Firefighter. And, and that yeah. is Lena Bosco. And we meet Lena Bosco, who had been separated from the 136. She's a 136 firefighter. And he, she and Eddie kind of team up during the episode. Yeah. Yeah. That was... <sighs> I, I'm i not a huge fan of Lena. Yeah, not yeah um, me either. Like, in this episode, I don't care as much. Mm-hmm. But, like, later on, and we'll talk about it, I don't like her as much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't really, like, pay much attention to her, honestly, in this mm-hmm. episode. Like, she was just kind of there, and I was like, okay. Yeah, like, she's she wants to find her team, understandably. And, like, we find out that she has a particular friendship with like her captain stuff which i'm like oh but like th- that's hard the not knowing but you gotta mm-hmm. keep working anyway which is what eddie's just narrowly missing <laughs> right yeah uh. so you know we get this you know she's been hurt as well but she's been helping people on the ferris wheel so they get her down and bobby insists that she go get the go to the field hospital to get checked out but she wants to keep looking for a team so eddie decides kind of he'll go to the hospital with her to make sure she gets there <laughs> instead of wandering off yeah the way bobby put that it was like that's great that's right. great and then um you know we kind of go to nighttime so this had all happened during the day so we get to the nighttime with athena has been re- everything from the uh accident had been resolved she's now in uniform helping with cops and kind of directing them to canvas for people that need help and she ends up finding the 136 captain pinned under some debris and he had to basically tie his arm off and she had to help him finish amputating his arm Ugh, that was that was tough that that was like such such a scene <laughs> yeah and then eddie and lena had made it to the field hospital obviously the records are so hard right now to like find anybody so they you know she oh we to forgot to mention earlier when lena was sent to the field hospital bobby had relayed to her that everyone except her captain had been accounted for. Oh yeah, that's right. They had said something like um, they'd all checked in except for Captain or something. Yeah, Captain Cooper, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was just like, oh, better, no, better okay. address that. <laughs> yeah, and when they when they get to the hospital, Eddie has a moment of uh, recognizing secondary drowning with a kid in the eat place, and so the doctor that's there asks Eddie if he can stick around when Eddie says that he's a combat medic. So honestly, really cool. I did not know secondary drowning was a thing until then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. No clue. Yeah, I've heard of it before um it's called dry drowning is another term for it 
Yeah. 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 This, there's so much going on. And then I know that Maddie was at some point using, helping, having a kid use her drone to like look around at this apartment complex. So she had sent out the 118 to this apartment complex where nobody was calling 911. And it's turned out that there was some sort of gas leak. Yeah. And oh, everyone yeah. there was yeah. uh, suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning, which yeah. is deadly. Yeah. And uh, after Lena gets checked out, she's um, trying to tell Eddie she's going to go look for her captain. And he's trying to talk her out of it, which is at the same time that Athena shows up with blood on her hands which i think eddie at the moment saw her and was like why are you bleeding <laughs> and she's like and it's she's not like, my it's not mine <laughs> through the episode we get buck um having hunting down uh chris like he can't find chris uh he's been all over places he gets cut up helping out with things um and he finally after checking all the different other spots he ends up at the field hospital too borrows a phone to call maddie and while he's on the phone with her he sees eddie which that's like oh <laughs> fuck. oh sh- yeah oh shit like oh no yeah what am i gonna say to my best friend and he even says that to maddie how do you tell your best friend that you lost the son oh yeah and that's <laughs> like yeah like i remember that but like i also didn't right yeah like i i remember that that's like such a heart-wrenching scene um i didn't remember the exact phrasing Same. but you had it in there yeah but i'm like yeah essentially how do you do that like it's not your right. fault it like it's a tsunami but yeah yeah like you don't want to be responsible for like losing a kid let alone losing like or even like if something <laughs> were bad were to happen to Chris, mm-hmm. which thankfully nothing bad happened to him. Right. Um, yeah. You would feel like guilty for the rest of your life. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, and so I was glad that they're like I know that Eddie sees Buck and he comes up to him and, and Buck during the day had only found Chris's glasses. So he had those around his neck. So Eddie obviously recognized the glasses and then it's like, where's Chris? And I can only imagine what Eddie was going through his head at that moment. Yeah. Especially um, since just a few months earlier, he'd lost Shannon. Yeah. Right. So that that's like, especially the kicker for me. Cause it's like, he, he's basically staring down having lost his entire family within like a six month span. Yeah. And I'm like, even the strong person that Eddie, he is yeah. would have completely broken at that oh yeah, yeah. Totally. even if it was just chris he would have but like having that it's like oh man oh yeah and like thankfully they didn't really let that go on long like literally right. almost immediately chris shows Probably. up with yeah. like a couple people and stuff and they're like which this is the kicker we saw these people before yeah. yes no the lady was carrying the... a child in a red sweatshirt yeah. and you can't see the face all you can yeah. see is that she's carrying somebody but then she shows up here and you recognize it and you're like oh my gosh so i think remember at the apartment when bobby was loading everybody into the post office vans yes and I love they go out and then chim stops and there's a bunch of people walking towards them i think that lady was with them so i think they loaded them up too so that's i think why she showed up then I, is because yeah, they came with yeah, jim and hen yeah i don't remember exactly but i thought that was the lady that in the earlier in the episode when buck went to save those people in the water after he kind of like saved chris that mm-hmm. um he was like can you watch him for a second i thought that was one of the ladies maybe it was i don't remember yeah i'm not sure. I, I feel like if that had been then she would have i i don't know I don't think she knew his name though, so maybe. No. Well, and and the and the woman Athena actually was uh, talking to that woman earlier in the episode too. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Because like a guy and his son was looking for his wife, and then the woman had Chris and Athena's like, "We'll just go to the thing, like the hospital, to check in, and they'll help you find your family or whatever." And then the lady's like, "Thank you," and she's holding this kid. And, and you like when you look face. back at that, it's and I'm like, like "Oh, oh Chris, God. why didn't she recognize?" recognize athena <laughs> but you know chris was probably asleep or something yeah, like uh, it's like oh but that i don't know that's always something i look back on and just go Dang yeah, it. yeah literally. but also at the same time it wouldn't have fit it wouldn't have likely finished everything like what if athena had been able to get hold of right. bobby and even if she had buck wouldn't have known and still would have been right. searching yeah like so- it just would have put off that little moment oh, at the yeah. end yeah, uh, that would have changed things. But they so. would have known Buck was out there, which is another thing. I don't yeah. know. Fan fiction. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully, Eddie is pretty quickly reunited with Chris, and the woman is like, "Are you Buck?" And he's like, "No, I'm his father, Eddie." And she's like, "Oh, he was looking for Buck." <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Stepdad vibes. Yep, yep. Yes, <laughs> Stepdad. <laughs> I love it. And um, Jim, Hen, and Bobby are there, and they see Buck, and then like Buck is watching Eddie and Chris get reunited, and Buck's like, after the day he's had, he just kind of collapses into their arms. So it was like I was glad the team was there when he did that, so like he could, you know, he wasn't by himself. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because, like, between just complete adrenaline crash, yeah. having pushed himself for hours, and also being on blood thinners. Yeah, he had, lo- he had just lost like, a lot of blood from the cuts and stuff from the day. Yeah, I was like, oh. and, and I, this, this episode. Man, yeah, this is such a good episode. And I love, like, at the, you know, they, I notice they're doing this every once in a while. They'll have somebody do a monologue that'll kind of, like, help the montage of the end of the episode. And I love mm-hmm. Bucks, which we, I don't know if you guys had heard, but Oliver said that he actually recorded the monologue in his closet in his house. <laughs> no, I did not know about that. <laughs> he said they needed it, so he just recorded it in his closet. <laughs> I want to know why he was in his closet. It's a quiet space. <laughs> I guess. I won't say the whole thing but i really like the whole monologue and um the end of it is or part of the end of it is sometimes being lost is not knowing how to get from where we are to where we want to be where we need to be and the song ends also that's kind of been playing is this phrase is wait for me to come home and then there's a knock at the door at buck's house i'm and like body yes <laughs> yes i do that like sorry. little family vibes I can't help um, it. So yeah buck and chris or eddie and chris are there yeah yeah and buck's just like wait you want to interact with me <laughs> yeah in which i'm just kind of face palming <laughs> like yeah, of course Eddie, eddie's like casually like yeah you're no boy and you're half a carla but you'll do in a pinch oh i love that <laughs> actually actually one of my favorite lines yeah i love that but my favorite is like after the this when eddie's like talking or whatever and um he says like maybe next time try going to the zoo and or <laughs> yeah, something like more works. inland and i'm like i love that part oh <laughs> so, that yeah i love that line like, yep. my f- I, I just love how blazing he's being mm-hmm. about this like Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah the, the, just something in one this time, yeah, cool. Yeah, my friend and I talk about that all the time because she lives in Florida, so she knows Eric Hurricane, and she's mm-hmm. like, yeah, literally. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I love that, you know, Eddie said, which is weird, or not weird, but at the end of season two, he made the comment, or somehow, that he couldn't trust Shannon to be with Chris, mm-hmm. yet he says to Buck, there's nobody in this world I trust more, or trust with my son more, than you. I'm like, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, like, I understand it so much, though, like, why? Because, like, the from the moment that Buck found out that Eddie was a father, he was like, oh, I love kids, and this kind of stuff, and he's yes. always been, like, the best with Chris, so, like, mm-hmm. I totally understand, like, why he, like, just had so much faith and stuff. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I did like your, uh, with the, that other line is maybe try going to the zoo this time, something inland. He's so casual about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I he knows that. that this natural disaster happened, but you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that is great. Part two. And then he just kind of pops back and he's like, oh, and thank you for not giving it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and like, like, as he walks out the door. Yeah. <clears throat> I love, like, the acting of that. Like, how casual he is. He's just kind of talking like this is conversation they have every day. Yeah. Yeah, He's literally rocking Buck's world right now. Right, and I think I think it, you know, it's a testament to Oliver and Ryan and their acting in that, as well as I'm sure the friendship that they have. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love, you know, the very last, like, line, which, because, you know, Buck had been struggling with, he's basically quit being a firefighter and he can't go back to that and, or at least he thinks he can't go back to it. And so the last line is, a few choice words can sometimes be the life raft that gets you home. To be seen, to be found. Isn't that what we're all searching for? Oh my god, I love that. Yeah, I love, I love that, that so line, much. and I think it's so <clears throat> monumental because Buck was struggling with what is he going to do now, and he des- he makes the decision to, as we find out in the next uh, episode, he's going to go to desk duty for a while. Yeah, and, <laughs> and there we get Fire Marshal Fire Buckley. Marshall Buckley. Th- this, <laughs> which I just, uh, it's funny. Excuse me while I laugh. Um, it's so <laughs> funny. Like I, I, I'm literally dead from this. Just like so funny. I think it's also funny of context because when they're doing that drill and stuff the 118 hen makes a comment like oh i guess we'll see when the new fire marshal shows up and they don't even know that it's buck <gasps> so oh. i'm literally dead with all of that oh i didn't get the vibe that they didn't know i think they all i knew. thought they did know no and that 
they were yeah. making fun and of they it. were just yeah they were i thought that's what they were doing no i don't think the they, new fire marshal i don't think they knew because context and stuff like they <laughs> they were like cause they said the new like they didn't know until like he showed up he didn't yeah. show up oh. at that point he and like, then he's te- it was after when they like they were like oh <laughs> and then he's like teasing them about the another station getting there five minutes <laughs> earlier and bobby's like uh yeah they are five blocks away <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm just I-, I forget what episode this is but i think uh it said about him that they've never seen somebody make check marks with oh, such precision yeah. chim yeah, chim, says that's yeah. Maddie. oh yeah. yeah i forget like i think that's this episode yeah. but um i'm like yes <laughs> yep yeah, um, and you know, and there's an actual emergency that happens during this fake fire drill, and then there's this ambulance chaser lawyer who's trying to get everybody to sue the city for like using their lunch break to you know do this fire drill and stuff. Um, and mm-hmm. I love Hen's comment. She's like, "Why don't you let the ambulance leave first before you start chasing it?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, and, you know, and through this episode, we get, like, I got a little confused. I, I get it. Like, I do, like, because Maddie, she's at Chim's, and I think it was during this uh, scene that she, Chim had said that about, I've never seen somebody make check marks so, you know, aggressively. After that is when Maddie gets up and she drops the plate and gets triggered and kind of, like, freaks out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then... Well, leaves real quickly from chimneys. Yeah, like, I completely get it, though, because, like, she drops it, and it has to do with, like, last season, and, mm-hmm. like, the flashback when she, like, drops the, or cracks the wine glass that had been, like, Doug's mother's who died or whatever wine glass, so it, like, brought her back to that moment, but, like, if you mm-hmm. didn't remember that, or even yeah. if you didn't even think of that, like, I didn't really think about it much, but I was rewatching. I was like, wait, no, and... But you still yeah. get the context, though, like, you get what's happening happening oh yeah, yeah. definitely yeah it, it took me a second though i was like but then i was like well i mean triggers can happen just any time like they don't have to be to be small so yeah um but yeah i had forgotten about the um a few of those i don't even know what you call them going back wow i'm my brain is not working today <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> flashbacks yeah of, yeah yeah uh, of the uh the wine glass i forgot about that yeah like that just made it sink in for me i'm like oh okay, okay. yeah 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 i just went there yeah, yeah. Which triggers is it's you know and i think the episode's name is triggers and i this episode is definitely showing that in different characters and you know we even see it in christopher um he's having nightmares about the tsunami and, but you and know struggling and because anybody he would but especially he's a little kid yeah and this is when i guess buck decides to come and bring his report to the station and (laughs) he sees that lena is working yeah that was yeah that was a low blow yeah i mean it's like did he think nobody was going to be working like to (laughs) well he was not able to yeah it's like obviously it was the tape over his name and stuff yeah that was the but it wasn't a whole new nameplate yeah yeah that was a low blow for me it wasn't that she was working there because like they she needed a home they needed somebody to take over his spot a little bit temporarily but it was the Mm -hmm. tape that i was just like okay that Mm -hmm. hurts a little bit yeah uh, like, mm. Buck, Buck is not my favorite person in the episodes following this, mm-hmm. but I can understand why that was, like, hard for him. Because, yes. like, ouch. Yeah, yeah. You're, te- you're like, temporarily. Because he feels like he's back. getting replaced. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, and even And, you know, probably tries- seeing, like, everyone's ease with her, especially Eddie's. <clears throat> yeah. mm-hmm. um, that's probably also... Yeah, that, difficult. I think, yeah, I think that hurt because, you know, Eddie's his best friend and, you know, now he's seeing that, you know, she's kind of, he's afraid she's feeling that spot too. And, and then he makes the comment about like the ambulance chaser is trying to do an interview with him or whatever. So then oh. he gets this bug put in his ear about doubt and this whole episode. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, 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 Bobby was trying to calm Buck down because Bob, Buck even said something like, um, well, I thought I would you know you were saving a spot he's like you know your spot is still here and he was just saying you know her house was destroyed or hurt in the you know the tsunami and she was displaced for a while until the house is repaired so she came there yeah and, uh, I, I i get why buck was hurt i felt that way before um, yeah <clears throat> you know and then we get other scenes in this with hen and karen are trying to get pregnant they want to have a more larger family and then when buck buck does finally 
meet with the lawyer? At- <laughs> yeah, I have a few different thoughts. Like, first, mm-hmm. I, like, I honestly, the lawyer didn't bring it up. I don't think he would have ever done that. I feel like the lawyer just put the idea into his head that that's what he should do and stuff. And I yeah. feel like he was already going through enough at this time that he was like, well, I'm angry, so might as well try <laughs> to get like that's how he wants to get his job back but the lawyer's like well i don't know like it's just like uh well and it came about because at first buck thought city or the department was not letting him come back to work what he didn't know until he had dinner at bobby and athena's was that bobby was actually the one holding him back from coming back so buck decides that was like a trigger for Buck to decide, okay, he's going to sue basically Bobby in the fire department because he wants his job back. So he comes over and the last scene of the episode is him coming and telling Bobby and Athena in like the middle of the night that he's going to sue the department and him for, he wants his job back. Oh yeah. And like Athena's kind of like at this moment when he comes to the door, like, oh, you can come in. He's like, no, actually I can't. Yeah. I I, I really (gasps) want, to like express my reasoning on this but i don't know if i should do that now or like after we get a few episodes in Uh, i have a very firm opinion of how what i think about this um well i mean we can talk about it now i mean we're moving into the next episode which is the rage rage which is all about very accurate name yeah (laughs) oh yeah it's probably better to mention it now since like because it kind of blows over after this yeah so my thing is when I was watching the season, I was mad at Buck for what he did, but I could kind of get it a little bit. What gets me is fans' interpretation of it, which usually winds up with the 118 being turned into the bad guys and Buck being completely exonerated of it, all guilt. Bobby was looking out for his team. What if Buck hadn't had that pulmonary embolism? What if he'd gone back to work and had it on a call? He would have been no help to his team, and he likely would have endangered their lives and the lives of the patient. Bobby did the right thing keeping him back because he had gotten cleared before. How were they to know that that wasn't going to happen again? Also, I get that Buck was feeling displaced, but filing a lawsuit was equivalent to a two-year-old throwing a tantrum, in my opinion. I agree. Completely. (laughs) Completely. Like... (laughs) yeah it went from like zero to 60 in like a snap because like exactly. he there were so many other things he could have done like he could have gone to human resources and been like i feel like i'm being you know discriminated against because of my um health situation i mean there's so many things he could have done besides suing the city and suing the fire department and suing bobby which granted i hate that lawyer and i get that yeah, he was preyed upon in a vulnerable moment which is what those guys do yes right but he persisted yeah that's why they're called ambulance chasers like they will chase any accident or any little tiny thing just to get a chance which and that's pathetic yeah mm-hmm. literally it is just like <laughs> so grace what you're basically saying is even though buck had some justification for what he's doing the 118 should not be looked at as the bad guys no no exactly exactly and Eddie and Shim had nothing to do with Bobby's decision. They were only- And Bobby did make the best decision right. for the team. Right. The only other decision that would have been probably the best one is having Buck back on light duty. Yeah. Exactly. So having him stay near the truck, like not having him go do the calls. But would he really have been satisfied with that? Right. And, and I don't know, but it probably would have been better. And there's, that's the only thing I think Bobby could have done better. And there's a term in Firehouse called a man behind. And most mm-hmm. of the time when a team goes out on a call, usually they have a man behind who handles phone calls, uh, making sure the meal is ready. So when the crew gets back there they can eat which i kind of like that concept yeah right so he could have easily been the man behind for a few weeks because the part of it was they didn't know exactly what caused the pulmonary embolism they didn't know if it was the screws in his leg from the surgeries they didn't didn't know if it was another cause it could have been from the pain medication he was on so honestly buck should never have come back to work until they knew for sure what caused it Yes. Because it could have happened again. And so Buck, but I understand, like, I understand Buck was being frustrated and he was triggered. He was mad at Bobby for not letting him able to come back. And I understand that. But I feel like there was definitely something else that he could have done. And he obviously was willing to come back to be a fire marshal. Yeah. You know, it's like, and after, like, the next few episodes when Buck's being, like, readjusted, the 
I've also seen, like, the Winnie King be, like, <laughs> mad, like, people being mad at the Winnie King for being mad at fuck. But here's the thing. If I one day am in that kind of situation where a co-worker of mine pulls some dumbass trick like that, I'm going to be mad too. Those people, firefighters, cops, what, whatever you want to call it, they rely on trust. Mm -hmm. They have got to trust each other in the field. They've got to know that this person has their back. And they need to know... Basically, that's, you know, they're mature enough to do that. Buck was, they could not trust him to have their back when he was, when there was a possibility that that would happen again. And they could not trust him after he pulled the shit like that because that was not the Buck they knew. Right. So I do not blame them for being angry. I may have been someone a little bit more in Hem's position, but I still would have been mad. Right. And, the, and they ask, you know, like, it is very common when something like this happens within, like, a, a, a department, a any business. It's often that when everything is resolved, the person either doesn't get their job back or they're transferred to another firehouse or a place of work if they get to keep yeah. their job. So because they ask for loyalty and the people at the 118 were trying to be loyal to Bobby and Bobby's decision as Bobby being their captain. Yeah. And making the de best decision for the team and the firehouse. And they were mad at Buck for breaking that loyalty that he's supposed to have as well. Yeah. So <laughs> that is me. That is what I view about it. Yeah. No, uh, Grace, you have every right to feel that way, and you're right. I mean, that's I, I, I'm glad they only had this cover a couple of episodes in the show and not drag it out through the whole season. Because yeah, because honestly, when this first happened, when I watched episode four, I almost stopped watching the series because I was like, nope, I'm not going to do this. This is stupid. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't like watching conflict, and that's why I don't watch these episodes yeah. except for once in a blue moon yeah, because they are so difficult to watch. Because for one thing, nobody's really at their best. Right. Eddie's furious yeah. for many different reasons. Yeah, he's got a lot on his plate. He has. Buck is hurt and he's throwing a tantrum. <laughs> Bobby's trying to do the best for everybody and maybe falling a tiny bit short, but yeah. he's trying. And Jim and Hen are in a rough position. Right. Tim's dealing with all of Maddie's, you know, unsure of what's going on with Maddie. Hen's got stuff home, so they're all yeah. struggling with stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and in the next episode, we get, you know, the only other thing in episode four is really that we find out that Christopher's nightmares have actually been centered around Shannon. And so him, Which and, that makes sense. him and Eddie like, finally talk after Chris has been um, seeing a counselor for everything that happened during the tsunami. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, th I think this represents a big, you, this is kind of the trigger point for Eddie and how we see him in rage. Because Chris was afraid of making his dad sad, um, and so he didn't tell him about Shannon right. and um, his nightmares being about that. And I, you can kind of see Eddie kind of, he, he's there for Chris and like he acknowledges that it's like, it's okay to be sad. Like right. it's, it's okay to be able to talk about this with him because, you know, it, it's okay to be sad. But I think the big thing for him was that Chris didn't feel like he could come to him. Yeah. And, you know, just so much has accumulated that we see it in rage. Oh, uh, yeah. My favorite. Right. Yeah, the rage room. <laughs> I want to do that. that. Interesting. that Guys, when COVID's over, let's go do a rage room. Uh, let's get together and go do a rage Can room. we, please? <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yes. I've wanted to do yes. one for so mm. long. So <laughs> That would be so much fun. Like, whenever I've seen something that has that in there, I'm like, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not All a particularly right. angry or physically, like, violent person. <laughs> <but> I'm like... <laughs> Yes. But this looks like fun, yeah. okay? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this episode was pretty tough. And I think it really touched on some big triggers in some way for some people. And, you know, Michael with May and Harry in the car get, gets pulled over. Oh, yeah. And, you know, obviously this was aired long before what happened last year in 2020. But basically the arresting or officer was training a young officer who was a rookie and the older officer was white and he was profiling Michael yeah and literally pulled a had his partner pull a gun on Harry and threaten Michael and it was just so bad yeah like it was 
And you know, that's how, that's why we have the problems in the police department that we have today. We have the racist cops teaching the younger cops to be the racist cops. They may already go in being racist. They may already do that. But it's being cultivated there. That's the issue. And we see that here. And it's like, I don't like watching at all. I I wouldn't, no matter what the scene was like touching on Mm -hmm. but especially this just because it's like it stresses me it upsets me and it's like to think that this happens quite normally for a lot of people this actually there was a scene there was something that happened a couple days ago or yesterday with a military guy having something like this happen and it's like ah yeah yeah i i'm i'm going around in circles i apologize but yes no it yeah it's 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 a very touchy subject it's a very tough subject and i you know and then on the other hand we get when after the fact they go home to athena and they're talking and trying to hash it out with her who she's a police officer i felt for her in this because she's she's black but she's a cop right so it's like it's like she's you're on both you're on both teams you're like you're like we're not the bad guys but also she as a black woman knows the bad guys and she sees them in her job and she's like we are but we aren't yeah it's a tough line to be walking right Uh, i felt for her in this i feel i felt for for everybody i feel for any police officer who's the, a police officer of color yeah. just because I can only imagine what you have to work with I, I, I but you know especially in the last year there's been a lot happened I mean, yeah just COVID even has just happened and that's really kind of wrench and everything the world's gone to shit yeah. you flash everybody yeah so I I think it boils down for me especially for this scene I just hate the fact that this racist stereotypical white cop was tr- teaching his rookie cop bad habits and yeah. i mean he had his rookie cop pull a gun on harry a 10 year old a kid that's and then like you know later i mean athena does she she lists she watches the whole ca- camera footage from the police car and the body cam footage and you know even the captain at the at the uh police station was like there's not much that's going to be done and unfortunately because the guy always walks that tight line of he does he he, it's not the first time he's had a complaint about you know profiling and stereotyping which is you know bad but yeah yeah, we could talk about this for hours i just it's (sighs) we could i it's it's just that kind of topic i'm glad it was featured in the show like i'm glad it was addressed yes and i think it was was handled very well too i'm glad it was addressed in this season rather than being addressed in like the fourth season because it shows that it's not just like being shown because of what happened what what is especially being drawn attention to in Mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021 like no this has been a problem for a while exactly yeah you're right exactly that's because this would have aired in what about 2019 i think so yeah yeah you know on to you know other parts of rage which you know michael's enraged because of this Uh, um, yeah which he has every right to be Um, definitely buck is and his lawyer are interviewing all the crew from the 118 about this whole lawsuit i wanted to throttle somebody in this scene buck or the lawyer i would take either yeah just saying yeah just saying especially uh, the lawyer Oh yeah, uh, well, yeah. I blame the lawyer honestly because he yeah. he knew what to say and how to say it to get Buck to to cave. And here was the thing about this. And honestly, you know, I put Buck in the hole. I want to talk about them, that kind of thing. But he didn't expect that. He didn't expect the people that he viewed as family to get attacked like that. Right? Yeah. Like especially, and you can see that during the entire like scene, he's just like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, like especially since like the lawyer obviously digs up all the dirt on them and like all the bad things they've done or whatever, and like Buck never wanted that. He just wanted his job back and stuff. Like that's all he wanted. He didn't actually care about the money or everything. He's like, no, like what? Yeah, unfortunately, you know what? I think. Oh, go on. I was just gonna say, unfortunately, I don't think Buck really thought things through. Like, I don't think oh, he no. realized the process. And so, in that way, I feel like Buck's a little at fault just in that situation because he didn't realize, like, what this was gonna entail. No. What he hasn't realized in this is that actions have consequences. And he is getting all of the consequences without any of the rewards. Yeah, exactly. And he will find this out, like, later on in the episode. Or I forget when he finds out exactly that. The lawyer's just like, you think they'll want you back? Right. Yeah, I think it's I forget when he finds Yeah, I think it's later in 
this episode because this whole storyline with him ends like honestly when i was watching it i was like wow this was only happening like the like this happened within like an episode ish like wow i thought of like i in my head it lasted a lot longer than it actually did yeah me too yeah like, I was like, wow. Uh, in all reality, it lasted... <laughs> Three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Four, five, and six. That's weird, because, yeah, you're right, because it felt like a lot longer. Yeah, like... I think it just all the drama that happened in there, all the drama and the trauma um, yeah. <laughs> that happened in there was so heavy that it feels like it, dr- it did stretch over, like, half a season, even though it didn't. <laughs> but then we get to my darling Eddie mm-hmm. being arrested. For doing something that I wouldn't blame him for. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, the whole situation was stupid. He li- li- he was in the right because he parked in a handicapped spot to drop Chris off or something. And yeah, it was like a birthday party or sleepover yeah, or something. So this guy with a knee brace on comes up and starts hassling Eddie for parking in a handicapped spot when Eddie had a right to be there because his son is handicapped. Mm-hmm. And then the guy makes a comment, and then, like, Eddie's like, are you insulting my kid? And then, next thing you know, Lena is bailing just Eddie out of jail. Yeah, I literally hate moments like this. Like, when people judge people for their reasoning of having a handicap placard thing. Like, right. you don't know the situation, so don't okay. judge somebody. Like, you don't know why they have one. You don't- There's, like, not everything is, like, visible- and stuff mm-hmm. so that's that really bothers me yeah it's like jeez guys yeah like if maybe if eddie didn't have the placard no maybe don't attack him the same way but eh, that would have been a little bit but he had it for a reason yeah and so, like, ugh. Yeah. so don't blame him for decking the guy exactly and you know Which, I, okay i was just gonna say you know i talk about it a lot with some friends and i, I have another podcast i do with some friends we're talking about it right now about Im- invisible illnesses just like katie said you don't know why somebody has a handicap placard so you know don't I mean, that's just that guy. And then, you know, obviously it turns out that the guy had had the knee surgery like three years ago. So he was just milking it and it wasn't the first time he'd hassled somebody in a handicap spot. Um, So the charges were dropped. Yeah. Which I'm like, good. Good. But that, that just disgusts me that it's like, you were attacking it, but you were the one faking it the entire time. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah, talk about a hypocrite. Yes, literally. <laughs> Hypocritical <laughs> little. Yes. So then we go to the grocery store. And uh, the funny oh part of gosh. this, I love the scene because Bobby's like, he's talking to them like they're going into this like scene or this case. And then he's like, <laughs> and he's got the list down and he's like, I'm going to split you guys up. You guys are going to go shopping and we're going to reconvene in the dairy. And yeah. it was so funny because he's like, got everything lined up. And I'm like, that sounds like Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> that is so Bobby. I love that. He's such a chef and he's like so particular about what he needs. Yeah. It reminds me of one of those like cooking shows where they have to get like the, a certain amount of like ingredients in like under mm-hmm. a minute or something yeah and stuff and i'm like that's <laughs> the kind of vibe i got for it. yeah yeah I'm like but yeah. he was so serious about it yeah and then at the grocery store lo and behold who shows buck 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 okay hey, my friend <laughs> i was like head like I, I was hitting my head basically at that point because I was just like, oh no. Yeah. And like you see, but you know, he's trying, he's trying to talk to them and like he's already asserted that he can't talk to them. Yeah. And it's like, mmm, mmm, yeah. And then Eddie goes off on him about, you know, I couldn't even call you to bail me out of jail. I love that. And then everyone's kind of everyone's just like, like hmm? and then Eddie has to correct himself if that was something that happened. Yeah, if that was, <laughs> and we, which it did. This is probably my favorite part about Lena. She's just over on the side, like, going, oh my god. He's like, Sh- <laughs> shut up, Eddie. <laughs> She's just like, stop. And then uh, Eddie's saying stuff like, Christopher misses you, but you can't be in touch. And Buck's trying to justify, he's like, well, maybe I could, like, come over and see Chris. The lawsuit doesn't prevent me from doing that. And then at the time, in the background, we see this like car accident like going on <laughs> and then like hen's like somebody should stop them and and chim's like those two or those two yeah. <laughs> like these two or those two because <laughs> like <laughs> eddie was gonna like punch i don't know i thought eddie was gonna punch i think he was very close to it i and, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think yeah i think he really wanted to but i don't necessarily think he was going to i think he really wanted to though yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah and he was just eddie was having a rough day and it just like he was just 
tense and stuff. So I don't yeah, think like he ever he didn't think Buck, through but... what he was saying. And yeah. like uh, I'll give I'll give everybody who hates on Eddie in the scene that he did say some unfortunate things, but also stop hating on my boy. Yeah. It was right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I think right after this is when Buck gets the call from the lawyer to come down there right away and they get like this million doll like millions of dollar settlement from the city and the fire department about his case and Buck's like, I don't care about the money, I want my job back. And that's when the lawyer's like, You think they'll want you back? And that's like Oh my gosh. Oof, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, he was reinstated after all of that because, like, honestly, the city just doesn't want, like, to deal. They want this drama to stop. Yeah, they don't want to yeah. deal with it anymore and stuff, so it's kind of like, well, if you get hurt, it's your own fault. Yeah, yeah. and the, I think the, I think Buck ends up dropping the lawsuit yes. because he doesn't want to. Yeah, he doesn't. Which, obviously, is going to piss off the lawyer because the lawyer's out millions of dollars because he would have gotten a whole bunch of le legal fees. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Serve that mm, many horrible words right. Mm, yeah. Serve right. Yeah. <laughs> and something that happens in this episode that I really hate, I mean, aside uh, from the, the Michael getting pulled over, because I really hated that, like, I feel bad, like, that situation. I also hated Lena taking Eddie to the street fighting ring and introducing him to that, because Eddie is not a fighter in that way. Like, I don't see Eddie as that. No. I, he's a I, tough guy. Yeah. And he's, he, he but... I don't see Eddie doing something illegal like that. Yeah. It's always Stupid struck me as, dangerous. like, obviously he punched somebody earlier in the episode, but that was when he was really provoked. Yeah. It's always struck me that physical violence, like, he's physically capable, and he may yeah. feel the urges, but it's always struck me that that's, like, his last resort. Yeah. In a way, I almost see Lena as a bit of a... I almost see her taking a little bit of advantage of him here, too. Right. Even unintentionally, because she knew he was in a bad spot, and she she took him to a place where he'd view it as like one of his only escapes yeah right. like one of his only ways to bend out i hate that he did the one thing i like about this the one thing i like it actually has to do with ryan because ryan does mma fighting yeah or mm -hmm. he does stuff like that i'm like okay yeah which is like he's good yeah. he's good yeah no yeah. which is partially but that's the only yeah thing like. <laughs> which is partially why i think they did that obviously mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. but that yeah that's it yeah, <laughs> yeah that's about yeah. it I, I, yeah and i know ryan does really well in fighting yeah I, yeah and and, and yeah. it's cool that they gave that element to eddie but i just did they have in the, to in the context though is this, couldn't is he have taken thing. a boxing or wrestling I, or something I, like yeah that. i was thinking that like why like i i get the theoretically i get the idea of it it was so that he was doing it in a safer environment and not right. like just beating up everyone on the street yeah. but like yeah like if he'd gotten into like a, a a gym or something where that was a thing but not to do just like illegal street fighting yeah what i think i think the reason why they put this in was because they had to give eddie a breaking point yeah agreed which turns up in like two three episodes something like that three or four maybe when he just kind of hits that point and they had to give they had to give him one and i'm like but still <laughs> yeah yeah so in the halloween episode which is the next one um, i actually really like this halloween episode yeah same but, yeah Buck comes back, and pretty much everybody's giving him the cold shoulder except Hen. And I love Hen. She's my queen. Yes, I love yeah. Hen, and, like, I kind of like their conversations they had in this episode. Like, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just liked how she was kind of, like, the only one that was kind of, like, there for him, I feel like, and stuff, and, like, I mean, he does deserve the cold shoulder and everything for what he put them mm -hmm. through, but I'm just, like, all, like, I don't know, when I was rewatching, I, 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 like, don't like what he did, but I kind of felt bad for him right. slightly just uh honestly yeah. same because yeah. in this i'm like okay yeah, he may have it coming but he's also a little bit of a golden retriever right now and i cannot stand those puppy eyes yeah, <laughs> yeah. that that that's my take on it i'm just yeah like, yeah but he's he's just oh yeah yeah I, honestly the thing about buck is that everything he does is so well intentioned even if it turns out horribly that it's like in this thing it's like he's trying to fix it but right. it's not being fixed uh, uh, yeah and, you know bobby's got his my house my rules so buck's kind of on the man behind job he's not going out on calls and he's doing stuff around the firehouse which is how it should have been after his oh, injury yeah if he had come back at all <laughs> like mm. and uh you know obviously eddie is very um harsh towards him at first but they do eventually have a 
conversation and Eddie forgives him for I was I was honestly stuff. a little surprised at how easily he did it. I, <laughs> I think he just kind of wanted Buck to grovel a little bit, like yeah. to kind of realize his actions. Oh yeah. And then he's just like, Yeah, I forgive you. Just don't do it again. And that's probably right. my favorite line. <laughs> and the, yeah. Just don't do it again. Yeah. And we get the buddy hug. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, and so one of I I think it was funny. So during the first scene, uh Chimney gets kind of taunted by a crow and so the whole episode he's being like taunted by this crow <laughs> and he's like are you a good omen or are you a bad omen <laughs> oh, because the old the old wives tales are kind of divided yeah oh. i still did divide. i love that line yeah. um, and then at the end when he's telling maddie about it he's like i oh, now i'm seeing crows and she's like you mean that crow? ambulance because <laughs> no one else has seen the crows right it's flown away before they see it yeah. and so she's like you mean the one that's on the ambulance and then it drops the his name tag that he dropped like during the scene like it remembered him so it took it back to him <laughs> i was like i was like love that yeah. yeah yeah so that was a cute little thing in there um and then we get this so there's this gal who i guess got into an accident and she had it hit her head hmm. and she didn't realize that she had a guy hanging out of her car like for days for days bleeding out and yeah i think for about her. like 36 to 48 hours like he was just hanging yeah. out for windshield yeah, yeah yeah no that was insane like i was like yeah, how can crazy. that happen like what that's insane like how are you not like dead yeah i guess a stability because he wasn't exactly going anywhere true um and i guess you know if he'd missed being punctured just the right place it was punctured yeah. in just the right places then i mean i don't think he would have lasted much longer but and i'm surprised he lasted yeah. that long yeah but and i love how after shift bone bobby sends him home bucks the one that stops them and helps even though he's on blood thinners and he gets cut up and yeah 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 i guess bobby calls or he calls bobby to come to the pick him up at the fire or at the hospital yeah so they kind of have their makeup what i love is that like we that. don't talk about we haven't talked about this and i'm just going to briefly mention it earlier in the episode hen and bobby were talking and hen kind of made the line of just like what bobby was like so you think i should let him come back and she says either that or let him go somewhere else that will and i think Ooh, that's yes. the thing that really like i think that just kind of got bobby thinking because he's he's very fond mm -hmm. of buck he, buck's kind of like a son to him so it's like right. think that just kind of made him think things through and just be like okay let's just let it go yeah yeah so i think because bobby had to definitely realize and figure out if he was he holding Buck back as a protection as his son, or like is it a really just holding him back because of his injuries and yeah. his health? Yes, yeah, and like I really like the line at the end when like Bobby and Buck are talking and buck is like i guess it's like the uniform is like my costume you know i put it on and suddenly i'm brave and strong and i make a difference feels like without it i'm not much of anything and bobby says buck you saved two lives without the uniform it's not a costume it's who you are i love that yeah. Lo those oh, yeah. that like, part Aww. it's my favorite i love, yeah i love it and like it comes like full circle and everything moving on to the next episode well two episodes later so we had athena begins in between here so she, we're not going to talk about that one right now we're going to have our own episode for that later so we get to this ice skating rink call where the team learns that bobby when he was a kid was a figure skating champion with a partner <laughs> i love that and everyone is shocked to learn about this and i think somebody says we'll google for photos later i think buck says that yeah, yeah. and then he looks so serious and then he almost um, slips at it he's just like mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah and eddie's got the rolled eyes yeah eddie's been street fighting making a lot of money buys a new truck i'm like <laughs> is he <laughs> a about life crisis yeah i mean yeah, i mean right. he was like the ac went on the his old truck so he needed a new one i mean one, i did he need a new like, one but that was like <laughs> the ac yeah he said that yeah i know i was like and then i'm like the ac would justify you getting an entirely new car <gasps> from a yeah, dealership <laughs> Like, you can get the what? used one. Why wouldn't it, though? Either in L.A. Well, yeah, but you can get the air conditioning fixed. Yeah, but sometimes, I mean, like, we've seen his like, truck. It was pretty that's like pretty. Up. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty True. common thing. Like, sometimes it's more expensive to actually fix the whole AC unit than it is to buy a new car. That is true. So that's that why true. I think that was, like, how it was. Yeah. I know. Either way, I'm just like, um, I'm with Buck. Impulse yeah. buy. 
totally not like you. Because <laughs> right, Eddie's right. not very impulsive. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, but like, still. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it, also in the scene, Buck has uh, found Bobby's old skating partner and got a picture of Bobby, which he's blown up to a life size. <laughs> of uh, course, he did. Cardboard <laughs> cutout of Bobby. And Bobby doesn't seem very phased at it. <laughs> he's just like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then um, Bobby's going through like the checklist and stuff. And I think he says something like, we're not going to have, uh, I'm not making lunch today. We're going to have a special guest chef and Athena comes to make lunch for them because she, in the previous episode, she had gotten suspended for what she had done. So she was on, was bored. <laughs> and so she came to the firehouse to cook lunch. And, she, and then she's joking to Bobby about having two of them looking over her shoulder. <laughs> because of the oh, cutout. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh also during this episode i think eddie eddie's at a street fight and he or a big fight and he almost kills a guy oh yeah he like yeah yeah but then he ends up calling 911 and helping the guy as much yeah as it was can. because a piece of bone um, so from his nose had gotten lodged in his air pipe i believe or something like right. that and i'm like okay okay yeah, yeah. but then, uh, it, because he fixed it he'd taken the bone out and stuff when the one 26 arrive which by now lena has been 36. reinstated to and stuff because it's been yeah repaired. and they are like okay somebody with medical knowledge did this and she looks up and she sees him and she's like yeah, oh, yeah. No. so okay this is actually no we're going to get to this part so i'll, I'll comment on that later it, it's when um it's when bobby finds out so <laughs> oh about the street yes. fighting yeah that's like yeah. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's the next thing. Yeah, I love, yeah. like, the things come out of the scene because, like, Bobby and Eddie, mm-hmm. like, have, like, a lot of things in common and stuff, like, right. loss and stuff like that. Especially, like, and stuff. Your entire world is kind of lost. Right. Well, and part of the problem, too, was like Lena had seen Eddie, helped him get out of there without getting in trouble or by the police, and then. She went to Bobby the next morning to talk to him, but by then, the 136 captain had already seen Eddie and contacted Bobby about yeah. it, so that's when Bobby pulls okay, Eddie th- aside to have a this chat. This is my thing. Happen. This is but what I can't figure out. 136 captain. Captain, captain Cooper, Cooper had an arm <laughs> amputated. He would not still be working. Mm-hmm. How yeah, did Yeah, I didn't think about how- that part. Yeah. I, I, I think they just messed something up. up. Um, yeah, same. I, I was about to I say that. Like, they definitely, yeah, it's like one of those things where, like, where they think we're not going to notice, but we are like we're, too we're obsessive, skilled. Yeah. We're too obsessive and skilled to not know this. There's like just the mm-hmm. things they think we won't remember. I mean, the average person probably won't remember, but we, we remember. remember right now we're telling you, so you'll Man. never be able to get that out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Basically, but... Well, he he did have a prosthetic arm. Yeah, would he but still like, be able to go? I could to tell work? he had a prosthetic. He probably not as a, he could as a maybe a captain, but not an active. Like he wouldn't be able to go into a fire. Yeah, he could be able to. I, I don't that. know how. I that feel works. like yeah. I don't know if he'd still be able to. I feel like yeah. yeah I'm not. I yeah, I'm not really like sure about that and stuff. I don't know. It's it's I don't know. It's a lot to think of. I mean, maybe if they got in like Bucky's yeah, arm yeah. from like the marvel movies but no, no. oh yeah <laughs> yeah um, like even going yeah. into a fire with press i just thinking about this it's, gonna melt. Yeah. it's plastic I-, I just think it's highly oh, yeah. impractical yeah. if that's a well, thing like if that's what they did it's metal and plastic uh, but yes my dad's my dad's prosthetic leg was very interesting I'm talking yeah about that. <laughs> um but yeah so and eddie sees lena so he thinks lena came to rat him out so him and lena kind of have a confrontation which is kind of the last time we see her i was kind of glad to be like bye yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but on the other I, I agree but i also on the other yeah. hand she's right like eddie was so focused on himself that like she's like what's my cat's yeah. name she's like i know about your kid i know about your drama i know about your this i know about that but do you even know my cat's name and he goes uh i don't know and she goes oh and by the way i don't have yeah. a <laughs> I always yeah. went through that scene yeah. but I know how so she she at least calls him out on him the way he's been acting and then obviously bobby and eddie have a conversation about what happened and on him. Th- this is kind of what i view eddie's breaking point as because he just kind of breaks down <laughs> and i'm just like my baby yeah but i'm glad I'm glad he finally because literally he's like yeah i can't let it go because i have to be in control and i'm like i get it but (laughs) well and i you know and i I can see where he's coming from because like he's like i'm the only parent that chris has left 
so he has to be in control. Yeah, yeah. But Eddie's got to realize that he has family. He has Abuela. He has Peppa. He has the entire he has he Buck. Has, you know, that has his back. He has Buck. Yeah. Um. So there's plenty of people in his life that can help with Chris if Eddie needs some time to get, you know, to take mm-hmm. care of himself. Because Eddie really didn't have a chance to process. I've been through that. I didn't really have a chance to process my mom passing away because I was taking care of my dad too. So I get it. I didn't, you know, so Eddie didn't have a chance to process Shannon dying. Um, and then he shares that he's like, I'm mad at a dead woman. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, that, yeah, that. Yeah, I love that Oh, line. and he finally gets it off his chest because I'm guessing, I don't even know if Buck knew that yeah. Shannon had wanted a divorce. Because everything happened afterwards, but he finally tells Bobby that, and that explains so much of his rage, just right there. Yeah. Um, well, he bottled all that up yeah. and hadn't shared it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love this part, just because he's like, yeah, and she's gonna break his heart again. Oh, wait, she already did, and Bobby's just like, she died, and he's like, yeah, after she told me she wanted a divorce, I'm still mad. How stupid is that? I'm angry at a dead person and at myself because I forgave her. And I was like, ooh, I felt that. Yeah. A lot of growing in this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of growth. I, yeah. I felt bad for Eddie, but again, I'm glad he finally opened up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then the next, kind of the biggest thing, and I kind of the finality of this episode was they were on a call, and Hen and Chim take the patient they were taking to the hospital. Hen is driving, and as she's driving, she goes to turn the switch to change the lights so the ambulance can go through an intersection, and the ambulance, she hits a young woman in a car, and the young woman passes away at the scene. Um, yeah, she was, so, yeah, she was only 16 i believe yeah. it was yeah she was very she was a teenager yeah early teens yeah or late teens and uh, the girl passed away she was a cello player yeah and uh so hen is really impacted by that because it was one thing to hit her but then to find out that she didn't make it yeah yeah um, so obviously hen is suspended for a full review because they have to figure out what happened right because she thinks that she hit the switch but then she couldn't for sure guess and then they're like you know they did find out that she did hit the switch to turn the the lights but the other girls lights never changed oh right yeah, yeah like yeah. a system board and kind like of thing. yeah yeah it? So Hen was cleared of all you know, any misdoing. Like, yeah. Not of the guilt. Yeah. Right. And this was like the, from what I remember, the last episode. Of, I think this was like a cliffhanger for like in between this season. And I remember mm-hmm. just, I don't love this storyline personally. I, like, I think Honestly. it's very real. You know, sometimes things happen. I don't know how frequently that mm-hmm. kind of thing happens, but, you know, it yeah. happens. It but was, yeah. it's not my favorite storyline just because, you know, it's tourist there's up tons of emotions and I like stuff yeah. I can process easily and that's not one of the things I can process easily. Well and also in this episode Hen was kind of distracted on a few things because um, Karen was really struggling with um, not being able to get yeah. pregnant. Like they'd gotten some test results that she was not going to be able to carry a baby and because um, they were trying to um, get pregnant and yeah, I think like working. something had happened with the embryos so, or something. Um, yes, and they like they last shot it didn't work, and so they were so she was really like depressed about it. So when this happened, Hen had been kind of distracted. So mentally, she was just really kind of not a hundred percent. And so there for one thing, she wasn't able to remember if she'd hit the switch because that's a reflex thing. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, the rough. amount of times I've walked into yeah. a door just because my reflex hasn't opened up the door <laughs> and I didn't realize. Yeah. That. It's not the same thing, but you know, sometimes. <laughs> You, yeah, you no. Karen. That's on my comparison. Or the time yeah, I apologized no. to a wall for walking into it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I no. walk into things like, apparently. Just... But um, you know, so the reflex yeah. just—you think you know you're doing it, but when it comes down to it, you don't know if you did it or not. Yeah, it's also right. like habit because there's sometimes where mm-hmm. I do something like every day, but I'm like, did I do that? And I'm like, I me can't all remember. the time. Yeah. yeah literally oh my god so the new episode starts with you know hen and uh karen have gone to take like a little vacation um after hen is cleared of you know any wrongdoing with the accident um and then eddie buck bobby and chim are on a call where a girl gets hit by a meteor (gasps) 
And I love Buck, like, Googling all that, like, having knowledge of, like, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I love how Eddie's the one that comments that Buck had been at the tsunami, and now he's kind of obsessed with natural disasters. I love that Eddie was the I one that made love, that comment. I also love, like, yeah, uh, B- Buck was kind of laughing at that, and I think that's when you, I think that's when you really see that, like, the camaraderie is, like, back. It's like, yay! Mm-hmm. I just I just love yeah. seeing them interact, period. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, like, we get that one comment in this episode where, like, we see Eddie, Hen, and Maddie all in therapy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, Eddie's, like, saying how he doesn't think he can connect with the therapist or whatever. He doesn't think it's working out or whatever. And Chimney's like, Mm -hmm. oh, you should talk to Rosemary. She's the one I talked to after the stabbing. She was great. And Buck is like, is that the one I (laughs) slept with? And Bobby's like, no, she doesn't work for the department anymore. And Eddie's just like, (laughs) yeah, exactly. You slept with your therapist, and I'm just like, Eddie, why are you so surprised? It's Buck we're talking about. I'm surprised about. he hasn't heard about this before. Yeah, and, yeah, that, and, yeah, that was Yeah, it. and Buck's just like, I, I was uh, going through a phase, and I'm like, that's <laughs> that's one way to put it. Yeah, and then Buck, after that, he's like, weren't you just going through one of those? And then he's like, kind of <laughs> he kind of just like, because he's like, he's going through his own Shut phase. up, Buck. <laughs> I do yeah. like that, um, <laughs> like, he didn't react much more than going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, fair enough, but I don't yeah. want to speak about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then a little bit later in the episode, because Maddie had been dealing, Maddie's going through therapy because um, she had tried to help a woman who was trying to get out of um, an abusive relationship um, by kind of lying to her. Then she got caught and was forced into some mental health treatment just because, you know, she was struggling. And uh, so Buck and Eddie kind of talk about it. While Eddie and Chris are over having dinner at Bucks, yeah, uh, I'm like, oh, I love that scene. It's so and the whole conversation that the guys had. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, the buddy, but, buddy fan in you is kind of like, yeah, guys. If but, you're listening to but the get, one, like the original nine one one episode we're having, in case you haven't clued in by now, we are buddy fans here. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but I love the conversation, the long conversation that Eddie and Buck had. And, you know, Buck was apologizing to Eddie for not being there when Eddie needed him because with the lawsuit and the disconnect that they, could, they couldn't they could be able to communicate, you know, Chris and Eddie both were going through things that Buck should have been there for and he wasn't able to. And so he was apologizing and Eddie's like, no, we're way past that. Buck's like, but I'm not. He's like, I should have been there. Maybe he could co- talk some sense in him and then Eddie's like you talk sense into me that would have been interesting I, I loved that cause it's like I mean yeah fair enough yeah. but I love how like Buck comments that he's like I really thought you were gonna take a swing at me at the um at the grocery store and then he's like eh not that you wouldn't have deserved it but I would do that you're on blood thinner <laughs> oh I love and that then, line and then, yeah and Buck, Buck all puffs up he's like yeah I'd still take you and then he's like you think so I know so you wanna get the just title comment on the sexual and they tension? end up playing <laughs> Yes! Uh, oh my god, come on, what else was that? There's, there's no sorry. other way to interpret it. Like, are you blind be. if you don't interpret it that way? I mean, mm-hmm. that's so much sexual tension. And then, and then they're like, well, what are this, what's gonna happen? And then they're sitting on the couch playing this street fighting game, and Chris is sitting in between them, and that's, it's just, like, such a good family bonding So I would have hate to have seen them wrestling. <laughs> That would have been, um, but that wouldn't. That I think that would negate the family thing. So yeah, but still, I love that. Yeah, I just want to know where Chris was hiding during all this. Like, he wasn't back at the couches. And... Oh yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. Good question. He couldn't have been in the bathroom maybe, the whole time. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. It was really good. I'm really glad they had kind of hashed it out. Yeah, talked. We're now yes. halfway through the season. I think the. One of the big, like, emergency scenes was there was a, a truck accident in a, a tunnel in L.A. And the, it turns out that the truck was carrying radioactive illegally. material. Illegally. And um, Hazmat's called in and the guy's pinned. So Bobby sends everybody else out and he ends up getting exposed to the radioactive material. So thankfully, um, you know, he went through the decontamination process and everything. And they tested some things at the hospital. So he had to get checked out and get checked every every week for like the next six I'll be honest that wasn't one of my favorite just, uh storylines yeah I didn't even like really rewatch that because I was just like trying to focus on like the main thing yes <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. important enough but it's also like yeah what well, nah yeah I don't I only thought of it because it, it popped up a couple more times in the 
um, next couple yeah. of episodes, which don't we get to the Christmas episode next? Yeah, so this is actually the last episode. I don't know, like, things are so confusing when I rewatch things. I'm like, but the lady that pepper sprayed Santa in this episode was the same lady from episode seven of Lone Star when she was like hitting on her handyman. Oh, that lady. Yeah, that's the same lady. <laughs> and it like when I watch those episodes mirrored, it's very obvious it's the same lady because in the Lone Star episode she mentions how she was going through anger management or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like Oh yeah, yeah, I remember you. Honestly I never remembered that until <laughs> yeah. like now or whenever we've mentioned it before. But that makes sense. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, like all the connections they make is literally like yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I love that. Oh, but then the next scene kind of breaks my heart a little bit because yeah. it's when I think it's Chris and Harry are like they're making a gingerbread house and Buck's helping them. And then like mm-hmm. Chris is like to Buck, Hey Buck, can I spend Christmas with you? And Buck has to be like, I'm working with your dad. Like, oh my yeah, heart. It was so hard. Yeah, and I love that too, because we also not only do we get that, we also get, you know, Hen oh it was, it was Denny and Chris. Oh yeah, it was and Denny Buck. and Chris, never mind. Um, and I love how like Eddie and Hen are kind of sitting there looking at the kids and they're like, Oh yeah, we thought we'd get the uh, all three boys together for and a play date. That's what it pans over, and you see back there too. And I'm like, I love that. There, it's yeah. like it's the parents watching the kids. Yeah, yeah. forget the facts. I'm like, what's um, 29? But you know, right? yeah. Um, but then again, you know, we get Buck, who is he's like, is it just me or is Christmas gonna suck this year? And he's like, it's not um, just you. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So at the station, Buck's kind of like the walking MD. WebMD for Bobby because he shows a nosebleed or something, which can be a symptom of um, radiation poisoning from the last yeah. episode. Yeah, like, I'm like, well, it's funny because I'm like, oh yeah, he's definitely a walking WebMD to uh, Bobby because, like, you, Buck is the one this whole season having medical issues, and then he's like, wait, what if it's this? What if it's this? What if it's this? And I'm just like, oh my god, that's, like, so ironic that it's just like i love that park it's just like oh my god like of Bob. course <laughs> yes literally and then bobby and him are talking about how everybody's put in a vote for what they're gonna do for christmas dinner and bobby's like it's like tied and uh buck's the only one that chose chris uh thanksgiving or turkey i guess yeah and everybody else has chosen chinese or something else and bobby's like i think i'm gonna pick chinese so i don't have to cook. <laughs> oh, i love that <laughs> uh, honestly and and uh i think that's when buck starts to get the idea of something brewing mm-hmm. in his head um and in this storyline he can't... oh my goodness uh michael sleep oh into my gosh the I... athena's <laughs> and she wakes up with the <laughs> bobby or with the michael in her bed oh yeah that was funny and then she just like she's just like so weirded out and so she walks to the couch and she, then Bobby comes home and she's like asleep. She was just waking up on the couch and I'm like, he's just like, uh, what is there something wrong with her bed or something? <laughs> she's like, my ex husband's I'm dead. like, oh. <laughs> he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then Michael comes out looking drunk. <laughs> he's oh. like, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's like, yeah. Oh like, good. Yeah. yeah. Which. It's funny at the moment because yeah. he says like he's on a new medication for sleeping that could possibly cause some sleep, you know, sleepwalking. And but he like drove over to Athena's house, yeah, got in bed and everything. So there's something up, yeah. Um, and then he like I, I kind of like appreciate how he like took the key off the key and he kind of handed it to Bobby, yeah, um, and said I'm sorry. So like he was acknowledging like he didn't mean to do that, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Like, for me, it doesn't really, like, some people might be like, well, that kind of is bothersome. But, like, they have a comfort level and stuff where mm-hmm. it's, like, obviously he didn't mean to do that. Yeah. And, like, right. obviously nothing happened. But, like, it's just, like, no, like, I kind of feel bad and stuff. But, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then later in the episode, he does walk through a plate glass window at a mall. Oh, and yeah, so that was rough. Get, you know, when they check him out, they find a mass in his brain. He has a brain tumor. So it's just kind of, it comes up and, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't want to tell the family obviously cause it's Christmas and he wants to give them that, you know, but he does end up telling Bobby, which I kind of like feel bad for 
Bobby being the one that's gonna have to keep that quiet. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's the best one with a secret, though. And, like, obviously something like that, even if you're terrible at keeping secrets, you're not gonna reveal that. That's not, like, Honestly, that gives me Owen and Judd vibes from last last season. Yes. Oh, yes. I I love that. I actually do like Michael and Bobby's, like, friendship, I guess we could call it. Like, I actually like... I I I like like it. Like, the... I like the bond they had because they've never had, like, bad blood in between them. Which, why would they? But, like, I just always like how they had, like, that respect right off the bat. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad how, like, through the rest of the season, we kind of see the change in Michael and Bobby. And they do actually kind of get to know each other a little more. Yeah. Um, And then the team comes back on Christmas Day from a call and... Athena and the families are all there gathered for a big thanks or a big Christmas dinner. Oh yeah, I love that. As a surprise, helped by Buck, who had kind of orchestrated it. I all. loved yeah. that so much. I loved it. So Chris got to see Eddie and and his Bucky. Oh, it was good. Yeah, and Bucky Aww. and and Chris sat between Buck and Chris at or Eddie and Chris at a <laughs> that's that's today. Good. Chris sat between Eddie. And Buck at the table. Yeah, I love that. I'm like family. <laughs> yeah. Can't me otherwise. Nope. 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 I agree. <laughs> Same here. So the next episode, which actually premiered, so it premiered the Christmas episode. Yeah, cr- Christmas episode was in uh, December of twenty. Yeah, nineteen, and then in March of twenty. 20- 20 or april of 2020 is when episode 11 start happened because it was after lone star yeah it was definitely yeah it might have been like the end of march if not early april i did look it up yeah. recently i just can't remember when it was not that it matters mm-hmm. but it's just good context mm-hmm. yeah so there are a couple of months in between christmas and then the new episodes and one of the first calls is Eddie and Buck have to go surfing on top of the fire truck that's racing down an airstrip to catch a guy that's been hanging out of a, a plane. Like, okay. <laughs> and I love, I loved it because it was like the action, but then also at the end when the guys are like taking their gear off and the people that had been skydiving that were still in the plane that are walking away, the woman turns because she's trying to set her daughter up with like the guy that was flying or whatever. And so she turns to both of them and they're like, are either of you single? And they both, Buck and Eddie both look at each other and they don't like- respond. <laughs> like they look at each other because they're yeah. together. I can't change nope, my nope, mind otherwise. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And like this is the point where Buck gets a clean bill of health and stuff. Yay, so thank funny. God finally this like I uh, this did like last, which I'm glad it ended like at the like it ended just as the second half of the season we we're getting started. We're like finally like, mm-hmm. finally nah. and also Chimney's brother Albert shows up. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not uh Albert's biggest fan. Yeah. Um yeah. but not at the same. Not at this moment, okay? Like in the season two I was just or season three, I was just like, oh no. Especially with all the stuff that like happens as he's first brought in. But like I feel like I don't know. This season, I do like him. Like I like. And this way, I like. I, yeah. I don't well, care. Well, and I didn't like. He could go. He yeah. could leave. I don't really care. <laughs> well, I think what I liked about it is is even though because we've gotten some backstory with Hen and we've gotten some for Chim. We've got some. We know about family past and drama and stuff, but we haven't had a lot with the. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Chimney, we know his full like backstory with his family. Mm-hmm. So, like, we know that, like, his mom died when he was, like, younger, and right. his father, like... I think he was 15 when she died of cancer. Yeah, I thought it was a little like younger than that, but maybe not, and stuff. And then we know that, like, him and his father, like, don't have a good relationship or whatever, and basically his mm-hmm. best friend's parents, like, basically raised him and stuff, and Albert is like basically his kid brother. Like I think, yeah, it's like his half brother. Think, it's his dad's yeah, son and a second wife. I think they might have mentioned that Albert. I think they might have mentioned at some point that he was twenty. Yeah, yeah like he was. He was really young. Yeah, and I'm like okay. Um, but yeah, showing up at the wrong time because this is when it was like Chimney's birthday or whatever, and yeah. he was wondering if it de- his dad would call or whatever. And Maddie was like making him dinner, and she answers the door, and he's like, "Oh, is uh, Howie here or something?" Um, it's so and... weird to hear him referred to as Howie. I forget that's his name. Sometimes I'm like, "Who's Howie?" Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 
And so they, like, basically invite him in, and that's that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of awkward. And then Chim's kind of getting a little tense with, like, throughout the whole episode with, like, Albert popping up at all these different times with the family and the fire family and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, also in this episode, Michael decides not to get surgery for his, the tumor removal. Um, and then... I think was it karaoke where the big blow up with Chim and Albert happened or from Chim? Uh, I'm pretty sure they were playing pool. Yeah, okay. yeah. I vaguely remember that. I don't remember it completely. No. I think yeah. the, well, was, yeah. I think the, they were at the bar. Yeah, I think the karaoke was like last season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean maybe the same were, bar. I mean uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a little and, uh, detail. Yeah, very little detail. And I think I think Chim got a little confront, like c- kind of confronted Albert because he was just, as far as he, he was concerned, Albert wasn't his brother because he didn't grow up with Albert. Albert has grown up um, in Korea with their dad and his mother, or uh, not Chim's mom, but well, yeah, Albert, yeah. Mom. And uh, so it's just kind of, he's like, but then they, you know, so Albert goes home with Buck that night to kind of you know, crash on his couch. And then Tim kind of comes over the next day and apologizes and they talk. And then they have a party I at Eddie's. I love this. <sighs> yeah. And Buck tells Maddie, uh, this is Eddie's house. I'm not I really love like he's like, no, no, no. no. I, I'm not you. you. I, I've been here a lot. And like, yeah. yeah. Like, I love yeah, I love the message that gives off. Yes, me too. <laughs> like, yeah, um, yeah. And lastly, um, Maddie meets Kevin's parents, which is basically like Chimney's surrogate parents. That's how I view them as mm-hmm. like his mm-hmm. best friend parents. And I love that because it's like he's yeah. not gonna introduce her to his parents but like i just love this okay i don't know what to say he just... introduced her to the family that mattered because she knew exactly yeah exactly she knew the 118 already and now he introduces her to the family that's not the 118 i'm like yes right yeah I love that because it's so true. Like so many people don't always have like a family is not always this like what you'd expect. There could be a uh, aunt or an uncle that raised the kid because of something, and um, or just friends parents become the parents because of some situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was cool to see that different dynamic and that he. He respected. I think it was the Lees. Yes. Yes. Family name. Um. He saw them as his parents. Um, thought it was really cool. All right, so episode twelve: Mad Maddie, Chimney, Buck, and Josh game night. <laughs> I love this scene. Yeah. yeah, isn't there a comment of like you know all of our couple friends were busy or something? Yeah, so we yeah. so we decided to target the singles, and uh, it's just so funny and like. Josh was like, I didn't know any better. I thought you would, you, I'd say you were setting us up like Buck and Josh. And Maddie's like, oh no, I like you way too much to set you up with my brother. And Buck's like, oh hey now. And Maddie's <laughs> like, and I love you too much. Oh Which, my gosh. I'm sorry, but I feel like that was kind of a semi outing for Buck because like Maddie didn't seem like phased at all about saying, like teasingly joking about setting Josh and Buck up. In a way, yes, I've always thought that about it. But in another way, I kind of like how they did make a big deal of, oh, no, I'm straight or something like that. No, it's like a teasing thing just back and forth. Like, I'm hey now. Yeah, well, I think it's like this running thing where the writers want to make it known that like, yeah, we know that the fans want Buddy to be other. So they make these like slide comments and like slide lines throughout the whole, like, essentially since like season two. Mm-hmm. So it's just yeah. like one of those things. Yeah. yeah. And then we get the whole incident um, at Chris's school with the skateboard oh. and Eddie overreacting, which I don't blame him, but he did like I overreact a little bit. A little actually, okay. I would have done one or two things I would have overreacted or I would have underreacted. Yeah, like I think it's mostly because like Chris ha- Chris has CP and stuff like that. Yeah, and like obviously it's very dangerous and stuff. And like he and also Eddie's not on un- Eddie's Eddie's under the impression at this point that like kids pressured Chris to do that. Not yeah. that Chris actually wanted to do that, which you find out later when 
in the night when Carla's there and stuff, and Chris is like, I wanted to, and he's just like, what? Because the look on Carla's face was just like, oh. Yeah. I'm like, uh, gosh. Yeah, and then Chris Chris tells Eddie he lied to him about being able to do everything or anything. And that's rough, because every every parent that is involved with their kids will tell their kid, you can do anything. Right. That is what I have seen, and Eddie's in a between a rock and a hard place because yeah. Chris can't. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, especially for like a kid like Chris that has a disability. Like parents always want their kids to know because like kids with disabilities are told that like they can't do this and that all the time. Mm-hmm. So like he wants him to like be able to do whatever he wants, but it's not necessarily the reality. And it's also like he's also very young, so like it's mm-hmm. not like the conversation you'd be having with him. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. It's, Rough. Yeah, so Eddie's having a tough time with hearing, you know, like, Chris telling him that he lied to him, and so they, he goes to Buck, to, can they kind of talk about it, and then Eddie and Chris have to have a discussion, which is tough. I mean, you know, Eddie has to talk to Chris about, you know, he is different, and I'm sure they've talked about it in the past, but just not in depth because like you said i don't think eddie was really ready to have that conversation with him yet yeah and eddie wants to be encouraging he doesn't want his kid to think that he can't do something that he could you know which i think you know any good parent would want that like right would want him to believe you know you can do anything even if no kid can do everything right exactly and and i like how eddie you know approached it with he's like you know not everybody can do everything he's like and and Chris is like, what, like, cook? Because, you know, talking about Eddie can't do things. And, <laughs> and he was like, hey, now that's not nice, but probably true. <laughs> yeah. But then he talks about the, you know, he's like, I have a black thumb. Every plant I've ever been given, I've killed. But your science teachers told me that, you know, you, that, you know, helped raise some of the thing, the flowers or garden stuff that they were doing in their science class. Chris was the successful one. or So that was something that, you know, so, and so I liked it. I liked that they had the conversation. It's definitely hard. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, Chris is unfortunately going to have to, you know, understand. And as he gets older, he will a little bit clearer understand that. Yeah, I mean, the kid's only, the kid's only like eight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like definitely not the time. Right. And then we get Josh kind of thanking Maddie for, like, he was encouraged by her comment that he reinstated his dating profile and has a date scheduled. Which I I don't know if we knew this before. Yeah, well... But we learned, at some point around this, I think we learned that he's gay. And, like, I loved that. I just don't remember if we knew that before. Okay, so, like, honestly, I think it was just always implied, but it was never, like, blatantly, like, said. Mm -hmm. And I know the actor who plays him is, so, like, I feel like it was just, like, kind of, like, it was just, like, if you read in between the lines, it was just kind of there. But it was never, like blatantly like said but i think it was definitely like heavily implied yeah yeah and stuff and like yeah so like he has this date and like stuff and i'm just gonna go right there but like it was like a setup and he gets beat up or whatever and stuff and then we eventually get like him and maddie in the hospital which i like really like that like this is like where the friendship is or whatever Mm -hmm. and like i like what they have and stuff and i feel so bad for him like granted he's probably like one of my favorite characters on the show even though he's not treated like a main character i Agreed. treat him like a main character yeah. it's just my that's how i feel and stuff so i'm just like oh poor baby yeah i'm i've always loved his character and mm-hmm. so like seeing this i'm like baby yeah uh, and then the cutest moment of the episode, Buck and Eddie build Chris, like, a skateboard and everything, like, mm-hmm. with, like, you know, so it's grounded all around the sides and stuff, so it's mm-hmm. safe, and they're, like, pushing him, and Carlos like, next to him, probably taking, like, videos or something, and I'm like, oh, family. Yeah. Family time. I love that scene. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, bonding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I have to mention this, but it's just like when I watch this now, I'm like, I think about in the crossover when Marjan's like, you built him a skateboard oh. or something like that. I'm like, oh. And didn't Eddie say something like, yeah, well, Buck helped? Yeah. The creepy yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, we had to do it at some point. <laughs> I love, like, the throwback. And yeah, and seasons yeah. and episodes and all that. Yeah, good look back. So the next episode we get um, Michael, Bobby, and Harry are going on a camping trip, uh, which is a tradition that Michael and Harry have had. Um, had something to do with uh, Michael's dad. They used to go camping, so they would go and plant a tree in honor of his dad since Harry um, was born after his uh, Michael's dad had passed away or right around the time his dad passed away, so he didn't remember him. Oh, um, I relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. And and uh, this was Michael, because Michael has the brain tumor and he's decided not to have the surgery and not knowing if the cancer and the treatments and stuff are going to work. He wants to take Bobby out there because he wants to kind of pass it on to Bobby in case something ever happened to Michael that him and Harry could continue doing it. And uh, which is kind of an emotional thing for Bobby, but also kind of an honor um, for Bobby, I think. Just mm-hmm. he's... You know, Michael has that much respect for him to be willing to share that with him. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've always thought this was, like, sad, but also special in its own way. Uh, It's, like, also sad because, like, in when they're camping, there's a moment where, like, Harry wants to do something at that moment. I think it might have been, like, shh go to this certain spot or whatever i don't actually remember specifically but and like michael was tired or whatever and he's like mm-hmm. he's like goes to sleep and then like they do it without him or something or they go somewhere else him and he's oh, kind of remember, upset yeah it was the tradition that as soon as they got to the campsite they'd go find a spot to plant the tree but then because michael was tired and he laid down bobby said well why don't we go take some pictures of some spots and then we'll come back and show your dad oh yeah and michael flips out because they did it without him yeah, it was like a nice gesture, but I kind of understand like mm-hmm. why he I was upset. I can get both ends. Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I get why they're both upset, and they both had their reason. But like, it doesn't really like it's not something major that like lasts a long time. It's just like he kind of even I think from what I remember, he like apologizes about it later. Yeah, and I think that's the um, I think that's when we find out about the whole like kind of the tradition and how he wants to pass it on to Bobby or hope that Bobby would continue it with Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in this episode, we also get, like, a Maddie and Chimney date. It was, like, in my head, it was very elaborate, like, this, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I don't know, they were just, like, at this place, and it was, like, rotating or whatever, and then it also (laughs) involves in, like accident because like somebody gets clipped in between the table i think it had to do with a proposal or whatever and i think that maddie and or whatever even made a comment that she didn't want like like oh great that's happening like i would oh yeah yeah, like she was kind of like disgusted that somebody was doing a proposal there and or what she thought was a proposal and she's like a public one yeah she's like yeah "Yeah, i don't want that i'm like oh maddie i get that i feel that so do i yeah like yeah like go private or semi like semi like in a public area but with like little to nobody around yeah 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 that's my view on it i'm like yeah exactly i think you're embarrassing yourself if somebody says no yeah so like they basically save this woman and Mm -hmm. the hotel like gives them like a free room to use for the night and i would just i would just like to point out my favorite line of the entire episode which is when maddie goes back to work (laughs) that next morning Mm -hmm. and she tells josh that (laughs) um you know it well like a pelvis split was involved and he's like kiki yeah Yeah, (laughs) yeah Yeah. that's why that's my favorite line of the whole episode yeah yeah, yeah. It's one word and my favorite line yeah, yeah yeah it's so good and then like at the tail end of this we kind of get her like trying to hang up with chimney and then we get like the 911 call center getting hijacked by josh's date which i'm not even sure at this moment that we even knew like obviously as viewers we knew it was his date but i don't think we saw like josh's reaction like and stuff i think it was more focused like on maddie and stuff like that yeah well i think what happened was because maddie had made a big scene at during dinner because chimney shared that he loved her and oh yeah, the first yeah sharing of it and she shared him like thanked him for it but she couldn't say it back because that was something that Doug had always kind of forced her to say. Right. So it was automatic. Something that abuse, abusers do a lot. Right. So yeah. then she just, she felt that, but she couldn't say those words to him. Yeah. So she hoped that at, like, when this situation came up at work, where all the pol- supposed police were there, when they came up and had a gun, and she, my uh, Josh was standing next to her, and he's got a coffee cup in his hand, and the guy who was his supposed date 
comes up to Sue and pulls a gun and tells him or tells Maddie to hang up the phone and then she says I love you Howie and then hangs up yeah which yeah which we no <laughs> we did like, we did see Josh's reaction I'm pretty yeah, sure like, he drops yeah, the cup. I don't because think, he I don't... he's the one that kind of alerted it because he recognized and he's like yeah. oh yeah. honestly I don't think he dropped the cup in this episode I think it was the next one because that yeah. was like, I, I was pretty sure he did which which leads us into the next episode, which this guy um, who had beat up Josh with some of his buddies actually had cased 911 operator center because they wanted to get access to it to have control over where the police were or where first responders were in the city. So they could like pull off this like art heist or something. Yeah. And, and the entire reason like it went, it worked like Josh getting hijacked and the reason he was beaten up was so that they could get his id card and the it. reason they knew about it to begin with was because they had an inside guy the and i'm just like guy. when they link all this stuff i'm like oh! yeah this yeah makes so much sense yeah, yeah this is like the episode in the previous season at the bank that it's mm-hmm. like the basically the same format of like kind mm-hmm. of episode like it's huge intricate like thing that happens right Mm -hmm. Um, and so like when Maddie tells Chim that she loves him, he's like, that's weird. Right. Cause she just said last night that she wouldn't do that. Oh yeah. And then he tries to call 911 and they get a, uh, a high call volume. So he calls Buck. Who's like just getting off shift. And it's like, do you guys have like a busy night? And he goes, no, wait, why are you calling 911? And I love how he's like, he's trying to cut stuff. No, it's fine. No, it's not. It's yeah. He's like (laughs) testing his apartment. Yeah, it was so casual. He's like, I tried calling 911 and I got like this weird message. It was, he's like, wait, why are you calling 911? Because Maddie told me she won't <laughs> like, Isn't much. that the whole point of what last night was all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, this is probably one of my favorite chimney episodes. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm just like, dependable chimney yeah. coming through. So Maddie saying that was hopefully a warning to Chim to know that something was going on. And then he was starting to pick up something was going on. And then Josh sends Athena to Chim's house. And the because the hostage takers had been like monitoring the calls and were like rotating the callers or the operators out. So they weren't doing it for very long. Um, so right before Josh was pulled off, he sent uh, Athena to Chimney's. <laughs> Didn't he do that during a bogus call? Mm-hmm. Somebody was calling to complain about something. He's like, you know, that's illegal and whatever. So he sends Athena, but he sends it to the address that um, Chim's at instead of where the gal was calling from. Like, oh, that right. was smart. Like, yes, yeah. boy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then she she and Chim kind of talk about it. She calls on her phone to um, her boss because the dispatch system has been down. And uh, Buck's on the phone with Chim. And Athena and Chim decide to go down there. And Buck decides to go himself. So Athena has to pull him over because he races past. I think that was deliberate, though. He's like, oh, nope, yeah. you're taking that- me with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Actually, yeah, like, honestly, he, like, cuts her off, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and, uh, she's just like, what the hell? Right. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's like, that's like, not who I think it is. <laughs> and, um, and then I love how when he gets in the car, Chim's like, hey, Buck. And she's like, you guys didn't tell anybody else about what's going on, did you? No. Good, because I'm running out of room in here. Because <laughs> I'm like, I can just imagine them, like, having passed it on to, like, Eddie, and then Eddie'd be down there. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen then, like, that. <laughs> same here, I would have loved to have Eddie. Yeah, like, I, yeah, it makes sense it was only Chim and Buck because they're connected to Maddie, but I would right. lo- would have loved to have seen Eddie. Yeah, I well, and I, yeah, I would have loved it, even though it would have made, like, not that much sense. Like, zero sense, but we would have taken it. <laughs> right, like, we would have right. questioned it that much. <laughs> Yeah, so Athena goes in. She tries to go into the call center to get a call log just to, you know, follow up on something. Um, but then just as she's supposedly going in and the, they're trying to get rid of her, they wanted to shoot her. But Sue says, I can get rid of her. And she uses code 77, which she tells the guys is just like urinating in public or some like thing. bogus call. <laughs> right. But then Athena, when she gets to the car, she calls her boss and she's like, no, I'm sure she used a code 77. 
and it was Sue and she's like I know that voice and then she hangs up and they're like well what's that mean and she goes ambush proceed with caution I um, loved that yeah <laughs> so I was like oh yes yeah, so we've got Josh Sue and Maddie had all kind of dropped hints that something was going on well yeah. it wasn't just the I love you from Maddie and I was just thinking this she also called him Howie yeah, yeah when has too. she ever called him Howie yeah. she does occasionally but not that often no, no. it's usually Chin yeah it's like, yeah, it's always, like, I feel like this season, like, season four, she's called him Hat more, mm. but, like, at this rate, like, she, yeah, she never calls him Howie, that's just weird, like, I'm just, like, I'm still in that, in that state where I'm like, who's Howie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm still yeah. like that, I'm like, mm. Yeah, even to this day, I'm like, who's Howie? Who? Yeah, who's who? Howie? Yeah. Did he yeah. take over to the body? I'm here. Yeah. And, right. and, 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 like, in the between all of this stuff, like, eventually, like, when they're on the ground or whatever, M- Maddie finds out that the one of the guys was, like, the one that beat up um, Josh and mm-hmm. stuff. And, like, she was like, wait, you dropped the mug and stuff. Like, that. She's like, how did you know? And he's yeah. like, oh. Yeah, that's the guy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like. Yeah, when he drops the mug, that sends chills up my whole body. Ooh. Yeah, like his expression, and when he drops the mug, it's like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. like, I love this episode strictly for him, honestly, I'm not gonna yes. lie. Yeah. Like, like, I love the episode, period, but for him, 100%. Yes, it's right. all the content I need. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they need to have- I'm going to briefly go on season four right here. They need to have more Josh in season four. Facts. Like, yeah. Not just him as a dispatcher, him- as a friend and a person mm-hmm. and give him a freaking boyfriend. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I agree. Completely yeah, I agree. A million um, percent. <laughs> yeah, so they so kind of the tail end of this is Athena realizes that they're tracking all the police officers and first responders so she um, pops her hood while they've dis- left and pulls the um, GPS tracker out of her car which Loved disconnects that. it and so then they use their phones to call everybody to remove the GPS and then have them come and they kind of met in this area to kind of figure out a plan um, and like the guys inside they know the GPS is off they right. can't figure out why yeah they don't <laughs> know why and then they realize like oh we might have to rush because they, they think they might be onto them and thankfully everybody ends up getting out of there without getting majorly injured yeah the only mm. guy that like was I mean, injured didn't was one the... guy get killed the one that was so happy to like kill everybody yeah like that one guy like ran and they shot him but but, but i think before that the, the in the crossfire i think the main dude the guy that like hurt josh got shot or something happened to him so josh was he like no it was the, the uh, epipen pen, pen. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what it was, because, oh my god, there's, like, so many things in this episode I don't remember, and there's just, yeah. like, so many details that are so, like, little um, that I miss. And, like, and oh what I god. love about that is, like, Josh goes and he is resisting him because he's like, you don't get to die. Oh, yes. Oh, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Because they're all, like, just leave him and let him die, and he's like, no, you don't get to die today. Yeah, mm-hmm. in theory, you like in theory, people are like it's better if like the person that hurts you just dies. But like in theory, like no, like if somebody they get to escape if, consequences. Like yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, you don't get to just die and not like I'd rather like he would rather have him and I. If I was in the situation, I'd rather have you sit in prison and just rot because like that's all you deserve is to see only a few walls. But yes, yeah. and like if you if someone goes lenient on you or you come out early or something like that, then. then and we can rediscuss that whole dying situation. But other than that, yeah. So that was kind of the end of that episode. And so yeah. our next episode is Eddie Begins, which we will not talk about today, even though it's one of my favorites. My- um, <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> um, but uh, our next episode we're going to talk about today is Buck um, kind of befriends a former retired firefighter uh, at a bar um, after a great call that he's on TV for. And. Um, kind of befriends this guy named Red, who the guy who plays him, I cannot remember his name right now, but this guy is awesome. He's been in a lot of firefighter shows, and he's just an awesome actor. So I probably know him. Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, know he, I know he was in Rescue Me, and I think he was in Ladder 49. Mm, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't he's know. a really cool actor. Um, so when I saw Oliver post the picture with him, I was like, oh, that's really cool that they're in that. Yeah, so. yeah. And then the only other, I mean, this episode was really kind of emotional, but because Buck's realizing that everybody has a family to go home to except him. You know, Eddie's got Chris and that night specifically, Eddie has a bunch of kids coming over for a sleepover at their house, which I'm not sure why Buck wouldn't want to go hang out with Chris and his friends just because that Buck loves Chris. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, Hen's got stuff to go home to. Bobby's got stuff to go home to. Chin's got stuff to go home to. So Buck's really not having it. So he meets up with Red, who kind of is in the same thing. He was a career firefighter who lost everything for the job and you know so buck can relate to him yeah i honestly the funniest line is when buck is trying to figure out who he's gonna hang with out with that night is like him being like so chimney and chimney's like you are not the buckley i want to see tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, i love, love that, that line yeah um and then you know unfortunately it's found jack out mcgee the- yes jack mcgee he is I just went on a deep Google search. <laughs> oh boy! I thought you might, yeah, I thought was, you might as um, soon as I said that. But yeah, well, yeah does it say know. what shows he's been in? Because I know I he's been in quite see. a few. Because I'm on IMDb right now, so yeah. Um, known for Fighter, Gangster Squad, Basic Instinct. Uh, those are just the ones that immediately pop up. Mm. Well, he was in This Is Us, which yeah. I've watched a little bit of. Yeah, I've seen every episode of that, so... Blue Call, Last Call. Um, yeah, he's a... East Shameless, Coast. Will and Grace. Um, yeah, he was in Backdraft. Um, Law and Order. Rescue Me series. Blue Blood. Well, he's been in, like, every bigger name show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah. He has a smaller part, yeah. I, I felt bad for him because it comes out through the show that he's sick. He has a stage four cancer, I believe, or terminal cancer. And so Bucks really gets emotional about it. But I really loved how Buck, when he's noticing that he's passing away or getting sicker, um, Buck organizes kind of like a little... Like fire service. Yeah. Like, so yeah. as he's leaving the hospital, there's a bunch of... Um, firefighters, retired and um, active firefighters, they're kind of giving him an honoring send-off. Yeah, um, I love that. Yeah, I thought that was really, really neat and yeah. really cool that he did that. Yeah, I really like when we get to see, like, Buck's emotional side, because I feel like sometimes, like, you're, like, you s- he does, like, a lot of dumb shit, and, like, I feel like <laughs> mm-hmm. he's just, like, I don't know, like, just some of the things you do, he's, like, you're, like, is that is he even human but like he has such like a sensitive like emotional sign i like love that ever since like the diaz's came in in season two Mm -hmm. you see so much more of like his tender and more emotional Mm -hmm. side but in this one it's like particularly evident and I think this one, and, you know, we're not talking about it, but in Eddie Begins, like, these are two quick succession, like, big emotional for Buck episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what's sad about, like, after this, you know, after they do that great procession thing and stuff, he died in the night. And that's, like, that's so sad. I know. Yeah. You know, and then, but I appreciate that Maddie was there for Buck and telling him that, you know... Red didn't have a Maddie, whereas Buck does. You know, so yeah, Maddie's, I love that. Maddie's making the promise to him that you know she's never going to leave him behind. Because um, that that's kind of what Red was saying is you know all his fellow firefighters had gone, moved on, and had wives and wives and kids, and he didn't have any of that. So he just kind of sitting on a bar stool for the rest of his life, you know, drinking. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And, and Buck's starting to fear that that might be him. You know, like if he doesn't start seeing somebody um so yeah it was it was i'm glad buck got that experience where he was able to kind of see where his life could go if he's kind of doesn't i don't know shape up and ship out <laughs> how else yeah. to say it um yeah that's perfect honestly like a good way to put it you know, he's, he's, yeah but he has grown a lot through the last few seasons and he's working on it he'll get there he'll have a relationship someday He's got one right now. He will open his eyes and see it. 
Yes! Or, no, I take that back. If the writers would open their eyes and see it. Anyways. Facts. Yeah, um, yeah oh I have so many. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, like, too many thoughts to put, like, oh, into, yeah. like, yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, the only other thing that happens in this episode, which I'll only briefly mention because, like, I don't really want to talk about, like, the details, details on it. Mm-hmm. But, like, Athena starts working this case where this guy was basically, like, I believe he was, like, flying drones over, like, people's houses, yeah. and then, like, oh, basically yes. being a peeping Tom, yeah. and it leads to, like, different, he's like... A serial rapist. Yeah. yeah, exactly, and that's all we'll really say on the case case side of things, because right. it doesn't it's not, doesn't matter that much. It's just, yeah. like, good background yeah. things to know. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's kind of... Yeah, and that was that much in there, and I... The only thing I would have liked to have seen in this episode would have been a little more um buck's emotion of how he truly felt with eddie begins like not that they blew that over so we didn't get to see anybody else's like how anybody was doing after that because that was emotional for the whole team buck included and i would have liked also especially like kale into that like that was traumatic for eddie he was buried beneath 40 feet of wet earth yeah i think that's like the like kind of a problem with the begins episodes is it's kind of more focused on one character so like not necessarily that it has to be about like the different characters but that was like eddie could have died right yeah so like it would have been nice to have a little bit Mm -hmm. Uh, like just some follow-up in episodes afterwards yeah at least a mention of it honestly i don't need like this huge drawn-out moment i wouldn't want this huge drawn-out moment but at least like a acknowledgement of like what we just experienced right right yeah yeah i mean seriously just them sending him to therapy because of it or yeah or uh, him and buck just talking about it later something like like buck hugging him and saying i'm really glad you're okay or chris saying something or like them doing i don't know just something something to acknowledge that it happened um, I could have used something from the leap from the leap of when Eddie was rescued to like something in between that and the the day at school the show and tell. Yes, yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Like and they might have filmed seriously. something that they just cut out for time reasons too. Yeah, but it's possible. We don't care about time, we will take it. No one cares <laughs> about the other shows. Yeah. Make it just longer. Like, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yes. yeah, so our next episode is the second to last episode of the season where we start with a hot air balloon rescue that buck makes a comment and this is actually the first time buck has really brought up a mention of like season one um for a while um you know or really abby Abby for a while yeah yeah pretty much since mid season two he's pretty much been he's walked gone left like left her behind which is good yeah Looking back on that, we see this is a precursor to what happens yeah. in the last episode, but more on that Yeah, later. yeah, oh, yeah, we'll yeah they there. were definitely, like, throwing hints, because I think even in the previous episode, like, Buck was talking about, like, how he didn't, like, he still felt like he couldn't get over Abby or something along the lines of that. So, like, it's definitely still haunting him. <laughs> but the hot yeah. air balloon. yeah. Yeah. It was a good rescue. It was a good, like, kind of a cool, like, rescue that they had to do. But yeah, yeah, I just, I remember Buck making the comment in the truck about, you know, he's like, about how dangerous they are, or something like that. And um, I think Eddie said something about, well, did, did Maddie tell you that? And he goes, no, somebody else. So he doesn't <laughs> really say who it is, but we know, obviously, if you've watched season one, that it's Abby that told him that. You know, one of the, one of the things, and I, it did, I think, happen in 16 that we didn't talk about briefly, but it kind of filters into this one, too, is that Hen had treated a patient at a fire scene that um, she told the, the doctors at the hospital about that the patient had some condition, and the patient ended up dying because they didn't treat him for it. Um, oh, yeah, the guy in the fire. Yeah, so then a little bit later during that episode, she ended up, like, leaving her hand in this guy's chest to like pinch off something that was bleeding until they got into the OR or something like that. And so she connected with the surgeon who thought she was very impressive and she's kind of considering maybe going to med school. And so, um, but she hasn't said anything to anybody yet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Karen thinks she's cheating on, um, her with somebody and doesn't understand yet. So Karen goes to Hen's best friend, Chimney, <laughs> to this find scene. out. And, it's so funny. And 
uh, Chimney and Karen get drunk <laughs> over oh, Athena. Oh. And Maddie comes um, back to Chim's and finds them drunk on the couch and calls Hen. So Hen comes over. And that's when we find out that she's considering taking the MCATs, which is the, the test you take to get into med school. And yeah. but I th- will say, Karen's transition from, like, transition from, like, suspecting and let's just cheat on her to, like, just pride mm-hmm. at Hen. I'm like, Adorable. Yeah, yeah and like cute. Timney's just like, how could you? Or whatever. I, I, he's Maddie, acting like he's the one that's yeah. potentially yeah. cheating. And Maddie's like, know, maybe Maddie. we should just give them a moment or something. Yeah. He's like, this is my home. <laughs> yeah, okay. she should get out. She's a cheater or something like that. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you know when Karen and are reunited, he just kind of looks like I'm he's too drunk for this shit. Yeah, and then later he thinks he's upset because. She's leaving, you know, or that she's considering leaving him. Yeah. So I feel bad for that. But the, the biggest thing in this episode is Athena chases down a lead for this guy and gets into a very, very serious fight with him alone. Yeah, brutal. And she is beaten up, beaten to a pulp. And unfortunately, because of the radios, she is literally on the radio the entire time she's getting attacked and bobby yeah. and the whole crew listen in as she's getting yeah and, and like, so heartbreaking yeah. right here yeah and that's I think even, so traumatizing yeah and i think even on the 911 call part of it like maddie was like i think maddie was listening into it and josh mm-hmm. was listening into it so it was basically yeah everyone. you see the entire like 911 center yeah, so and I, like i think the, when a, a officer fire station yeah, I think when an officer radios for help like that, um, it goes to all dispatchers. So whoever's available can do help. So everybody was hearing it. And that's why Maddie said uh, to change the channel 50 was to get everybody off that channel that she was on so they could keep it clear mm-hmm. yeah, for yes. communication. And yeah, I just, uh, that gives me chills every time I listen to it. And watching Bobby's reaction in the fire truck. Yeah, um, I... I just want yeah. to hug him. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel he's so bad. barely keeping it together. Yeah, yeah, and it's, like, it's so, like, powerful, because, like, Athena is, like, such a, like, strong, like, woman and, like, police officer, and just, like, she's badass, and we all know that, and, mm-hmm. like, to see, like, a moment when she's, like, basically broken down and stuff like that, and, like, that she has to, like basically like be like that it's like it's just like wow i think this is the first time in the series where we've really seen her be impacted by a case like she's been impacted like mentally by cases before Um, but i think this is the first time where she's physically gotten into an altercation with a suspect or something that it's been this severe that we've seen at least in this um series yes yeah and um Angela Bassett is amazing. Yeah, she's love her. Oh, she! I love that actress. She's the only one I I I mentioned this I think last episode, um, but I uh, um, Angela Bassett is the only one I knew from any of the cast when the show first started. Yeah, like I didn't know like the name so to speak, but I'd like I'd seen her in Black Panther, and I know she voiced the uh, recent Lion King. Though I haven't watched that. Um, but yeah, I've seen her before, and I'm just like that woman is such a good actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know anybody from the show. I just mm-hmm. watched it. I don't know. And I need. <laughs> so the crew, the 118, had been on a call, and when they hear this about needing fire and rescue to the scene, Bobby and the team go, and as soon as they get there. The police are trying to stop them from going in because it hasn't been cleared yet. And Bobby's like, I don't care. He doesn't Bobby's say like, that. I will he just cut grabs down anyone in my way. I love how he gets out of the, the truck and just grabs an axe and then goes inside. And Eddie and Buck are right there with him. With They get the Halligans and they're like ready to go in. And, yeah. Uh, they're yes. like, I was like, they're ready to go fight if they have to. Because, yeah. you know, right before they got in there, there was a gunshot. Yeah. And I'm still not entirely certain what happened with that one. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, did anyone get hit? Who got hit? Did well, I know Athena didn't get hit. Or at least did she not. didn't get shot. But yeah. the guy didn't seem injured enough to have gotten shot. I think it was 
a like a wayward bullet. Yeah, I think but she I'm tried like... to get to her gun, and maybe it just went off, and it just ricocheted or something. Because yeah, he didn't seem like he was injured enough to have been shot. He seemed oh, like yeah. she got in a few good punches. Oh yeah, but yeah. nothing more than that. Right. And yeah. she was beaten to a pulp, but there's no mention of a gunshot wound. And I'm pretty sure they would have mentioned that. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I think it, like, might have just went off. And, like, but, like, that's heart-stopping in the moment, because yeah. it's like, oh, no. Yeah, and, like, then... Particularly since it went quiet afterwards, so I'm mm-hmm. like, um, okay? Yeah, and then we, like, she goes to the hospital, whatever, we move on. And then there's the sledgehammering scene in the fireplace. Oh, yeah. I have, like, uh, oh, so, um, yeah, I love the scene, but mostly yeah. for, like, my own reasons. <laughs> the song that is playing during this scene, the first time I saw this, I literally screamed. It's my favorite song ever. I need to just take a moment for myself. It's the Bones by Mary Morris. It's legitimately my favorite song. So I was like, I was like, oh my god, they're playing oh, this that's song. Cool. So I literally <laughs> died, and uh, mm. yeah, I... yeah. This was Michael's version of a rage room from C- episode five. Yeah, yeah this is, he he's like, I never liked that fireplace, anyways. So they Bobby and him take a sledgehammer to it. And, you know, Bobby yeah. decided to stay in the hospital for a couple of days with Athena, and um, he was at home. So Michael comes over to check and see how Bobby's doing, and uh, they get some of their rage out on uh, that because you know I. Michael, I know, had been trapped in the elevator because some power had gone out in the episode. Oh, yeah, with the guy. With the the doctor from the hospital. Um, And... David. Yeah, and so he never got a chance to... I love uh, him. um, ...really say at an official, like, exchange numbers or anything because as soon as he gets off the elevator, he gets the call from Bobby or somebody about Athena. So then he takes off running to go get the kids and prepare the kids for everything. And yeah, so it was just like, it was just emotional to see Athena like that. Cause we, she'd never, she'd been always the tough mom, protective mom to, so to see, you know, all that she went through was just, it was hard. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad that Michael came to check on Bobby. Cause I'm sure Michael was equally like upset. Cause even oh, yeah. though him and Athena weren't married anymore, they, you know, have had a good relationship and are still friends. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's still part of the family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a little bit more the gay uncle now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good uh, point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, the final scene of this episode is, um, Abby, or the final scene of the episode is you see the train. And I don't remember if, like, we saw, like, Abby calling on one in this episode or if that yes. was no, like a it preview was, it, it was because it was like, yeah, it was like you you see who she is and then it blacks out yeah and it's she's calling and telling maddie you're gonna need this you're gonna need you sorry you're gonna need a first date you know it's, she starts going into all these things and maddie's like uh, and sounds really like you've done this typing. before and she's like yeah well i used to be on your end of the end of the call yeah. and then it pans to her on the train where it's crashed and then she's looking out and then it goes to black so okay yeah now i remember that but sometimes <laughs> things like blend together like yeah. was that a promo or was right. that a, did that actually happen because i feel like i'm dreaming yeah <laughs> and then yeah so we go into the um the scene uh so we see the in the, the final episode of the season we see the train before it crashes some you know about the people on the train so we see abby um but then we go to uh the station where eddie is helping with um athena's test that she's practicing with and is letting the crew know about chris going away to camp for the summer for a couple of weeks this summer and i love how buck was the one that freaked out when eddie's like yeah it's gonna yes. be two weeks he's like two weeks what if he gets homesick what if he gets <laughs> Oh, and I love Eddie. Yeah, and, 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 and Eddie's like, like, "Why does it here so you can reassure me?" Yeah, this is not helping. <laughs> I'm loving how Buck is being more of a dad than Eddie is, and Eddie's yeah. still being a dad. Right? He's like, I love it. <laughs> yes, I do too. I love it too. Um, and then we kind of see like they're talking, hen studying, and she's trying to get into medical school, but she has to get a certain percentage or points on her test to get a upper like she doesn't want to just be average because of her age and stuff she wants to like impress them 
Yeah, um, she, yeah, like it's like a number score. Like I think she wanted yeah. to get above a three ton or something like, yeah, like that. It was something like that. Like there was a big number she had to get to, and she was getting like just under it. She's like, I can't be average. And then but she I'll also to... just started studying yeah. is the kicker. It's yeah. like yeah, it's, you like, just started. Right? Yeah, they're, literally. They're all trying to encourage her, and then Chim's. Kind of, <laughs> they all look to Chim, who's like her best friend, and he's like not real happy about it. Yeah. And yeah. all on, but, and like, he comes through, but, right. like, you can tell he's still not happy about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Hen's like, Bobby, why did I, why is your wife asking me if she could hold May's graduation party at my house? <laughs> and Bobby's like, uh, our living room is kind of under construction, and I love how, like, it goes right to Athena reaming Michael a new one. For, like, while she was in the hospital for a whole four days, you guys take a sledgehammer to the fireplace you gotta lose your goddamn mind <laughs> i she, love her saying that yeah. like it's so good <laughs> i love Ella. and uh, she has to go she's like in, t- in two weeks we have may's graduation party she's like y'all better fix it <laughs> <laughs> I love and then it. what harry said something about, well i'll help take it down and she's like oh no you won't your dad broke it he's gonna fix it <laughs> and yeah. he's like, yes, go, I am. No, i'm just going to go now <laughs> and he just makes his accent uh, I'm like, love that. Uh, yeah. So then we get, um, so Athena's getting ready for the victim's advocate to come over to talk to her about the case. And even though she comes over and Athena's thinking they're going to talk about all the other victims of the rapist, she actually wants to talk to Athena about what happened with her. But Athena doesn't really see herself as a victim of the guy. She just, so it's, she has this, isn't really ready to talk about it yet. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it also has to do with the fact that she's, like, a police officer. So, Mm -hmm. like, she's more focused on everyone else. And I feel like in her mind also, like, she's not the victim. But also because, like, in her mind, the women, even though, like, what she went through was very horrific and brutal, those women were raped. So, like, they had it worse off and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's easy to see, like... Mm-hmm. how she got mixed up no. mm-hmm. um i honestly i always skip through that yeah. that particular like sequence but yeah, i think it's an important one yeah i, I just don't like watching it all that yeah. much i don't either it, yeah it's and kind I'm, of emotional i don't yeah. yeah yeah like the attack i can't really watch like i've seen it once and maybe a few other times but that's kind of enough because i honestly like i like the after part and seeing athena but i don't really like the during just because mm-hmm. it's like to like i don't like to see that yeah. i skip through it to the um hospital i skip it through no i skip through it until the fire truck comes in mm. yeah because that's when i start watching it because no longer fighting that kind of thing yeah yeah that's yeah that, that's i'm not a fan of violence like that so yeah it's hard for me to watch so then i'll like get... i'll watch it once maybe a couple of times but other than that know what happens let's move on <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly so kind of the rest of this episode, well, we get quite a bit, but this is the train derailment. So we get kind of a couple of different point of views of the train crashing. Um, and after it crashes, we get um, Buck and Eddie are teamed up. And Abby is out there looking for someone and stops Eddie, asking him about finding her fiance. She recognizes the 118 on his helmet and uh, asks, are you with the 118? And I'm thinking... Nope, I just wear this one for the fun of it. Honestly, like, <laughs> yes! I'm like, I love oh, that stuff. Yes. Like, That's what I would say, honestly. Right. Eddie's, fun. Eddie's too kind to, like, be sassy. No, he's too <laughs> professional and kind. Yeah. Well, yes, true. And I'm like, you got the big numbers on your helmet for, you know, it's like, nope, I'm just wearing this for the fun of it. I'm like, really? Seriously? Um, but then Buck comes over and sees her and she's like, Abby? And then I skip through this yeah, usually. This yeah. yeah. So Buck finds out that she's looking for her fiance and Which like isn't that the kicker? Right. So then he's kind of like kicked in the gut that, you know, not only is she back, but she's back engaged with a guy who's now trapped on the train that he has to go rescue. Um and he makes conflict of interest. Anyway, um <laughs> Yeah. So then he makes the biggest mistake is promising her that he will bring him out safely. You um, never make a promise. Exactly. So, like, uh, yeah. Made, made a Tim mistake there. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a rookie mistake. Except right for there. I yeah. side with Tim a lot better than I side with Buck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was just uh, sitting there like, seriously? I think he's yeah. starting to make the pieces, because I don't know if Eddie ever knew Abby's name. 
And if he did, it's probably been a while since it was been talked about. So he's probably like trying to put the pieces together. Yeah, um, I think. Yeah, I'm yeah, not I, sure what he knows or doesn't. Yeah, know. I'm not like certain, but I think he knows. But no, he knows it because um, in the f- fourth episode of second season, when they're at Abby's place, Buck says, "No, this stuff belongs to Abby." Oh, okay, oh so yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I remember the con- conflict well, in the amazing. first episode of you know when you know. Eddie's saying, like, I know you're getting over a breakup and you're having a hard time dealing with it. So, yeah. So I, I knew yeah. that he knew of the breakup and stuff. I just didn't know the context. But, yeah. Anyway, so Buck and Eddie climb up the inside of the car that's vertical to get to Sam, who is Abby's fiance. And um, he's pin- pinned pretty bad. And they try to get him out when they realize there's somebody else pinned. And unfortunately, to get one out, they're going to hurt the other one. So they can't save both of them. At least in the situation they're in at the moment. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. like, and... choose which one you think you're going to be able to save. And both of them are in bad shape. All right, yeah, so Eddie, she's... go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, she's like, I think the reasoning was like, probably like, she was in the better position. Or maybe she was like, younger. So like, yeah. they were like, oh, she's well, like, he better had, to save. He like, I forget exactly, but he was kind of having his chest crushed in. Right. She had her it was hip her, like, into her torso. Oh, right. Mm. Yes, yes. But was at a better angle for getting gotten out, I'm pretty mm. sure. Yeah, they had different injuries, but equally, like, severe. And at the moment, really, they had no choices. They had to make a sit- decision. And Buck was like, well, how do we do this? And there was some bickering back and forth. And then Eddie makes a comment to him. He's like, I know you made a promise to her fiancé and and." Bob well, was like, like what? promise? What promise? And yeah. then that's when he finds out that, you know, Sam, he's like, Abby. Her fiance's Abby. Can we just appreciate Eddie's frustration in that? He's like, he's so done. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's like, like Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, Buck is kind of bickering with Bobby, and he's like, I know if because he wants to rappel down the outside of the train to um which if that thing falls open. over, bye bye. And Buck makes the comments like, "I know this is a lot heavier than a fire truck." <laughs> I'm like, "I like that. too soon, too soon, <laughs> too soon." <laughs> um, but him and Bobby, he ends up doing it. He gets the girl out um, from the outside of the train, and then they're able to rescue Sam. Which is when uh, Abby meets up with them as he's going to the ambulance, and Sam realizes that who just rescued him is Buck. So Abby yeah. has talked with him about Buck. I was kind of like, I hope you made a clean breast of everything. <sighs> so here, here's the thing. They brought Abby in for closure. Mm-hmm. You find out what happens to her, I don't think there's necessarily closure. Because she never apologizes or does anything like that. Yeah. We'll get to that, but I'm just like, why? Yeah. I'll say it this moment just so I don't forget to say it, but I feel like it's half ass closure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, we get the, you know, this, the train is accident. And I know at the beginning of this episode, Athena says she didn't been in the hospital for four weeks or four days and came home. And then she has two weeks before May's um, graduation party. So oh, kind of over the next few weeks. But uh, Buck gets a chance to meet up with Abby, and you're right. I, I honestly don't feel it was 100% closure. She needed to come back to give us closure, but it's almost like she was blaming Buck. Yeah. And like, she, it, I don't know if she was necessarily, but I don't know if it was necessarily she was blaming Buck, but she wasn't assuming responsibility. Yeah, she because she was basically saying that, you know, like, when she was there, everybody needed her for something, and I'm like, Buck didn't need you. He wanted you there, but... He didn't need you, like, carrying him or anything. Yeah. Uh-huh. She makes the comment of how, like, she didn't really have a personality, per se. Like, she was a 9 operator, so people needed her there. Her mom was dying, so she was there for her. So she didn't really have her, mm-hmm. which, in a sense, I get. But I also don't, because, like, that's, like, you kind of, like... She didn't choose the mom part. I'm not saying that. Um, she chose the nine one part, like being an operator. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm like, that was. I don't know. I just have a lot of conflicting feelings. Like it feels like she's pushing, like all these things of why I'm making excuses. But it's like maybe you should take like acknowledge the things and be like, well, yeah, I did leave. I'm sorry. Like 
Yeah. That's literally all just I wanted. Just say, I'm sorry for leaving you in the ditch. Right. That's and all that's... you have to say. It's not that hard. Exactly. And that's what we didn't really get. So we, as much as we got, like, Abby returning and her having a conversation with Buck, she didn't even really own up to her just leaving and basically cutting him off. Just what she did. Yes. Honestly, I would have, if it had come down to have her in for partial closure or not have her in at all, I would have chosen not to have her in at all. Same. We have moved past that. Like, yeah. we have moved past that. I'm not desperate to know what happened to Abby. Yeah. It wasn't like, that necessary. Yeah, exactly. Like, in the, in it, the context they brought her back, what? no, it wasn't necessary. No, yeah. like, they could have, like, honestly, in my opinion, like, even looking back at it, I'm like, it wasn't really not necessary because she left, like, end of season one. Mm-hmm. We went through, like, it was two over... Two full s- seasons? Well, yeah, almost, like, two full seasons without her, like, and stuff. So it was, like, it was, like, almost, like, too long mm-hmm. to get anything, like, and I don't really, I don't know, I don't feel any, like, I don't like it, but, like, I don't know, I feel like they just kind of did it so that way they, they're like, okay, done, moving on. <laughs> right, and, yeah, and I think, you know, and, and like, I think I kind of said when we talked about it in season one, you know, like, when she left at the time, I didn't mind it. Because she had a yeah. reason for going, and she had a legitimate reason for going. But through season two, and the leading him on, and then the, la- like, cutting him off communication-wise, and just, like, giving him a point to where he's just like, I'm done, and he leaves, which is, yay, growth on Buck. Like, I- I'm-, I'm supportive of that. But, like, yeah, you're right. Like, a year and a half or more, you know, later, you just come back and then i mean obviously she maybe was coming into town not expecting to bump into him um or maybe she was we don't know like if she had come into town and the train hadn't gotten into an accident would she have reached out to him maybe not yeah i don't think she would have no i don't think she would have so this was just kind of like it was forced for them to come back together um and but i'm glad that buck had an opportunity to say his piece because i don't think she ever gave him an opportunity to do that so this was a way for him to say his piece Honestly, that's the only reason why I don't, like, mind it, yeah. is just so Buck can speak his piece, because that's mm-hmm. all that matters, is that, like, because, right. like, in a sense, she kind of ruined, like, a great part of his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then, along with, kind of, over the next few weeks, we also get, um, Chim is finally caving and helping Hen study for her test, and we find out that Michael is cancer-free and goes on a date with David. <laughs> Love that! Love that. Yeah, that's, like, I think that's when, like, he gets a clean bill or whatever, and then, like, he runs into David, and that's, I or maybe it was before that, I don't know. I think he runs, he gets a clean bill of health, and then he sees David in the elevator, so he's like, hold the elevator, goes in. Yes! And yes. Then he's okay, like, that's, so where that's were what it was. And I'm like, <laughs> no. yes, I was so happy about that. Yeah, so uh, yeah. so we get now we've gotten up to May's graduation party, and there's a lot going on. Uh, uh, a lot of people. Um, Buck apologizes to Bobby for the way things he said on the train because he said a few things like "I'm not Athena, I'm not going to go buy it at loan," you know. So there's some <laughs> some uh, harsh things Buck said to Bobby during the train. Yeah. So he apologizes for him. And yeah. Kind of Bobby checks in on him too because he kind of knows with Abby coming back that it was a big deal. But Buck's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, and then I kind of like the parallel. Like, so at the beginning of the season, we get a party at Bobby and Athena's, and then we get the end of the season with the party at Bobby and Athena's. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like they yeah. have a perfect place for a party. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. I yeah. love the house. Yeah, I didn't even think about that like ever. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's, like, the photo booth, so you get all these little glimpses of, like, everybody j- joking around in the photo booth with all the little props, including some I Buddy and some Chris and Buck ones, and the just the Chris and Buck scenes are really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, we see Maddie and May, and she's like, oh, yeah, I want to talk to you about something. And mm-hmm. I thought it was because she wanted to um, become a nurse. I never yeah. would have imagined it ended up being what it was yeah same here me neither and then um also at the party maddie gets a whiff of something and she's like oh man that smells horrible and chim's like what you love this stuff and she's like oh we gotta go and so she and chim leave early and 
kind of after the party, we see um, Eddie sending Chris off to camp with a card that Chris has left him with that he's made for him that says, you're going to have fun, Dad, or something like that. Aw. Yeah, I love that! Final scene of the season is Maddie comes out of the bathroom with pregnancy test that's positive, and she has a second one that's also positive, and they realize that they're having a baby. Yeah. Okay, so, like, yeah. So, um, earlier in the season, like, in the the call where the woman like steals a baby that she cut out of somebody mm-hmm. that there's like a scene like directly after where like Bobby and Athena and Maddie are like at the hospital looking at the babies or something and like mm-hmm. they talk about having kids and then like Chimney and Maddie talk about kids mm-hmm. so then when I look back at the season like I think the first time last summer I rewatched the season I was like wait that was totally planned mm-hmm. like they totally planned like because they're like ah oh, now we don't know if we'll have kids and like Maddie kind of mentioned that she didn't know like if yeah. she'd have kids and stuff because of like Doug and stuff and I'm like yeah. whoa they did th- yeah that. I think there was a phrase like we're like a maybe or something like that yeah like, they both kind that's of were if yeah that's, they have them they have yeah. them if they don't they don't yes that was the line oh and I'm like oh my god yeah so I, it was a good season of I, I loved season two I love season three there are some things in each season that I could do without <laughs> um, yeah same but it was and a very drama filled season. Um, yeah. Like, obviously, it's a drama show, but like personal drama. And, well, like, some of it I'm happy to skip through. It was also a growth season. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, I, I enjoy this season. Yeah, I don't enjoy some things, but like, it's better than season one. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, I know, and and there's a couple other series I've watched where I actually just skip over season one, so this is kind of one of those seasons. Like, I we get a little bit of introduction to each of the characters, but I think season two is a really good starting point. So I often just rewatch season two, three, and obviously now four. Yeah, same. So. Like, who cares yeah. about one? Nobody cares about one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hardly ever rewatch one. If I rewatch, like, uh, if I go to one, it's to rewatch a specific scene or episode. Right. It's not to relive the whole thing. <laughs> Unless it's Lone Star, and then I will watch it over. Oh yeah, and Lone over Star. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen Lone Star season one so many times I can't even count. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Yes. So speaking of Lone Star, good segue. Yes. We have some news this week. Um, so to so we are recording this on April tenth, and on April seventh, our dear TK Strand, Mister Ronan Rubenstein officially came out as bisexual <laughs> because of the amazing support um, and positive response Tarlos and the Tarlos fans have given them. And also because of the way uh, TK has impacted his life. And I know I am amazingly proud of him for speaking his truth and coming out and saying who he is and being free to do that. So yeah, I have never so been proud of him. Proud, like, mm. Yeah. Um, And we will talk about it a little bit later, but we just wanted to say, you know, because that was, I don't know. Yeah, it was big news. It's been big news this week. (laughs) Yeah. Better, yes. Yeah, we got to mention it now when it's, like, just happened. But, yes, so proud. Definitely want to send it out to all of us fans who have been supportive of Ronan for whoever he is and, um, you know, helping him be encouraged enough to feel confident to do that. So I think that's, I'm proud yeah. of him and I'm, yeah. And I know that Raphael has been there for him and R- Ryan Murphy and several others have um, been there for him. So I'm really glad he has people in his life that have supported him. Agreed. Yes. Wow. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah. We did good. <laughs> very long, um, very, very, very long, long but, if you get through all of it, we love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Season three is over. And so we'll be, so I think um, we'll have one episode that'll air the day that the shows come back. And then we'll be back to regularly scheduled podcasts until uh, the show ends for the season. Yes. Yes. Very excited. And I'm hoping we might get word sometime soon about a possible possible renewal. I'm sure they will. It happened about this time last year. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it, yeah, actually, yeah, I think it was April. Mid-April, I think. Mid-April of last year, which it's hard to say because, like, obviously I'm not saying I don't think they're going to get I definitely do, but, right. like, it's hard to say when it will happen because, like, it could be after the season airs. Yeah. Or it could be, like, mid-time in the summer, who knows. No. But I hope it happens any day now because, oh, like, yeah. I need to know. Yes. Yes. Thank you guys so much for joining us and listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Anchor. We are also on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, and almost everywhere where podcasts can be found. On iTunes, please rate us and leave us a review. It would mean a lot to us. You guys can follow the podcast on our socials at 911LS Roundup on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow me, Katie, at Philobatarlos on Instagram and at Philobatarlos on Twitter. You can follow me, Grace, at RoninRapa911 on Instagram and at SheepGirl31 on Twitter. You can find me, EJ, at EJ8302 on Instagram and Twitter. Bye! Bye! Bye.